54 victory last year in Baltimore on Eric Correll's touchdown in the final 30 seconds. The last time they played here in Washington, D.C., you'd have to go back to 2013 when the Bears fell to Howard 28-14 in Washington, D.C. The last time they lost in this series, looking to make it four wins in a row over their rivals. And we're just about set underway, Pack Stadium. A lot of excitement on homecoming weekend at Howard University. And we're underway. Carl Garns will take it from the five yard line. Steps through a man and gets down to the nine yard line. And that's where the Morgan State Bears will start offensively. And their best offensive production of the season last week. The offense got it going. Elijah Staley, the big quarterback, six foot seven, 245 pounds, had a big week, 220 yards, three touchdown passes last week. We talked about Eric Correll. The running backs got it going. They had a wide receiver in Bailey who went over 100 yards. It's been a long time since that happened. And this offensive line, Adam, they're getting better. That's right. They were actually healthy last week. And the big number was no turnovers in the win against Savannah State. They had 19 turnovers in their first five games, all losses. So uh, being able to maintain possession so pivotal here today. Staley to throw on first down. Has the completion to Herb Walker Jr. out of the backfield up to the close to the 20-yard line. And that's a first down. 10-yard pickup. Staley to Walker. Staley last week threw for three touchdowns. And, and talking to many around the Morgan State program, they were hoping uh, that he could get into a rhythm and continue that today. There's the Howard defense, and it's given up a lot of yards and points this season. That's an area of concern for Coach Mike London, the new coach here at Howard. We give ahead to Herb Walker Jr., a five-yard pickup, and that just goes right what they did last week against Savannah State, getting Walker and Harrell both going running the football. And one of the big aspects of this game as we watch this run to the left side is the run game is going to run the clock. And Howard is an outstanding offensive team, and you want to keep the football out of their hands. But Mike London in his first year, the head coach at Howard, and Fred T. Ferrier on the other side for Morgan State. Second down coming up, Staley to throw the football. And over Herb Walker's head and incomplete. Let's go down to the sidelines to our third member of our broadcast team, Danielle Podlowski. Danielle? Bill, no surprise, I'm talking about Howard freshman quarterback Kalen Newton. The younger brother of Carolina Panthers, Cam Newton, is making a name for himself this season. Back in September, he led the Bison to the biggest point spread upset in college football history. Just last weekend, he threw for 285 yards and two touchdowns and ran for a total of 81 yards to beat Delaware State. Now, Coach London says that even though Kalen is just a freshman, he's a real leader out on the field. He said his strong play has earned a great amount of respect from his teammates. So. Thank you, Danielle. The completion there, another Morgan State first down. And you like how Stanley gets that football out very quickly. And Deontay White makes the grab for the Morgan State first down. And watch White. He gets the first down by making Aaron Walker miss in the open field there. And those extra five yards are able to move the chains. We'll talk about Kalen Newton throughout this broadcast, and I'm sure his brother Cam is listening in on ESPN3. He's in Chicago. The Panthers playing the Bears tomorrow. Staley's going to keep it himself. It fooled everybody. Has the first down and more in Howard territory. A lot of real estate in front of him. and gets down to the 25-yard line. You talk about those big explosive plays and a big first down for Staley. Boy, this is a read option play as Staley was going to give the handoff. He pulls it in, and they really caught Howard by surprise. Watch. Howard's thinking that run's coming right up the middle instead. It's Staley around the end. He's six foot seven. He's just eating up yardage with each step. Staley has that big body and that ability. There is Fred T. Ferrier in his second season as the head coach. Last year got a, his first win as Morgan State's head coach against Howard on homecoming a year ago. They'll go again to Staley straight ahead and falls forward for three yards for Elijah Staley. And Elijah started at Mississippi State. He was the backup to Dak Prescott. Didn't get the starting job, then left, went to Taylor, Texas uh, uh, Community College there, and then arrives on campus. There was so much pressure because everyone's like, we can't wait to see this giant. He struggled his first couple of games, but He's starting to get it now. He hasn't really played football as a starting quarterback for a team in four or five years, though, so Morgan State's hoping that he's starting to get into a rhythm. Second and six from the 21. Staley to throw the football. Has the completion in another Morgan State first down. The completion to Brandon Jones, who had a big game last week. They're working Jones into the offense. Jones with the grab and another first down for the Bears. 
Now in the red zone. Such a unique look when your quarterback throws to a tight end that's smaller than you. Jones last week had two catches. So they're working him in. They also really use Baldwin and David, too, big time receivers in the end position. Heard to Herb Walker Jr. trying to stay patient, but not this time. Howard Bison do a great job to make sure Herb Walker Jr. couldn't get outside. He was a bit indecisive on that run, whether to kick it outside or stick with his block. And in the end, he had nowhere to go on this carry as we watch him heading to the right side. Great rush there from around the end. And Morgan State, an offense that's gaining confidence here over the last few weeks. We'll see if they can punch it in here. Leonard made the stop. He's one of the freshman defensive end for the Bison. They're very young on defense. Second down for the Bison. Give to Herb Walker Jr. Cuts back inside, still on his feet, fights his way down close to the five-yard line. Here, and a five-yard pickup, and a little closer to the goal line for Herb Walker Jr. Now this time Walker really trusts his initial read. The play was made for him to go to his left, but he really cut back to the right side, as we'll see here. Look at this cut back right, all the blocking's going left, and uh, he nearly was able to break that free. Walker had a season high 109 yards and 19 carries. His eighth 100 plus yard game in his college career. He had that huge sophomore year two years ago. Now third down and goal coming up. Six yards away, Staley to throw the football. Going to the end zone, rifles a pass and it's incomplete. Staley Looking for Poteet, but he wasn't there. Incomplete. That one was close to being picked off by the Bison D. It just did not seem like Staley had a receiver there to make a throw to, and uh, Marcellus Allison was outstanding defensively there, but almost making a diving interception. So Luke Ernsell will be on for a field goal. He's two of five this season, had two kicks blocked. His longest is a 40 yarder. This will be a short one for him. See if he can give the Morgan State Bears their first points of the game. His kick is up, and the kick is no good. Just underway, Morgan takes it down the field but can't cash in. Howard will have the opportunity next. MEAC football on the Sports Fever Television Network. Wizards Lakers at 1030, Wednesday on ESPN. Morgan State misses a 23-yard field goal and no score just underway. Homecoming at Howard, packed house at Green Stadium. Howard 3-3 three and three on the season. Morgan State got their first win of the season last week. Here's our first look at Kalen Newton. It goes up top right away. Big play going down the field. And the completion by Anthony, his lead wide receiver. Anthony gets open and into Bears territory down to the 46-yard line. That combination is so dangerous. Newton to Anthony. An incredible start for Howard. They call this their go-go offense. Of course, Newton is in his freshman year. Mike London is first year as head coach, and the tandem has been dynamic. Anthony's 19th catch of the season sets up Howard at Morgan State's 46-yard line. Newton in the backfield by himself, three wide receivers down low, and the completion by Ezard. Ezard with the catch and gets a couple of yards. We'll take a look at this Howard Bison's offense. Anthony Filia, well, he's the MEAC Offensive Preseason Player of the Year. He had a, over 1,200 yards rushing and nine touchdowns last year. And this Howard offensive line, they are also a unit that's getting bigger. A couple of sophomores and of four seniors on that offensive line for Howard. Give straight ahead to Filia. Filia picks up a couple of yards and a third down coming up. Here's Morgan State's defense has really been attacking lately. Franklin has played unbelievable the last couple of weeks. The secondary coming up with a few interceptions, getting it done. Last week they had one playing better as a defensive unit. They also like to sack the quarterback. 17 sacks for this defense this year. Newton going up top, far side. Has a man and runs out of real estate looking for Anthony again. But threw the ball about five yards out of bounds. Morgan State's a team that's going to blitz. Very aggressive defensive team. There they sent six towards the quarterback. Howard tried to hit him up top as they did on the first play of the game. But it looks like Howard may go for fourth down here. Here on what is the positive side of the field for them. Fourth and seven from the Bears 43. Newton can punt the football. He's done it a couple of times this year for Howard. So that is an option and Newton will punt the football. Little pooch punt. 
Garns takes the football from Morgan State, gets a block, and spins his way up to the 25-yard line. So after that explosive pass play from Newton to Anthony, they have to punt the football back, and there's a referee down at the 34-yard line. Well, you hate to see this. This is our umpire who's down. And on we'll the step. Right now. We'll step aside with 8:50 to go in the first quarter. No score on the Sports Fever Television Network. Injured umpire Will Edwards in our officiating crew for the MIAC. Injured on that play. That was the stoppage. After Newton punted the football back to Morgan State, and the Bears will have their second opportunity. They drove down the field but missed a 23-yard field goal, their first opportunity offensively. We'll have a first and 10 from their own 25. Elijah Staley. Feeling more comfortable with this Bears offense. The give to Eric Harrell. Harrell falls forward for a four-yard pickup, and I like how they have the one-two punch. You let Herb Walker go the first series, and then Eric Harrell comes in with those fresh legs. You see, Harrell's got a little bit more power to his running style. They're lowering the head and really driving forward. That could have easily been only a two-yard game, but he makes it a very solid and positive first down run. Officially give him three, a second and seven coming up for Morgan State. Empty backfield for Staley out of the gun. Staley fires across the middle. Ball's bouncing in the air and almost intercepted. Was going to Brandon Jones, the 6'5", 235-pound junior. That ball was very dangerous to being picked off. Yeah, Leland Lassiter nearly had it in his hands there, and that was one of the first times today we have seen a team really drop back into his own defense. Howard rushed four. They had seven back. And uh, that pass by Staley, he could not find a window to fit it in. Lassiter with one interception so far this season. Very close to his second there. So a third and seven coming up for the Bears. Just underway, Washington, D.C. No score homecoming for Howard. Staley's in trouble. He's still on his feet and he's sacked. It's only been the eighth time that he's been sacked this season. But the Howard defense got him to the big quarterback. I'll tell you, Stanley's a very good runner with a football on a designed run play, but I don't know if he's a great runner as far as trying to get away from a rush. And that time he just could not slip away as multiple Howard defenders were there to make the tackle. Aaron Motley was one of the guys who got there to get the sack. Morgan State will punt it away. Howard on the return, goes nowhere. Minus three yards in that return. Next week on the Sports Fever Television Network, we'll be down in Baltimore, Maryland, our MEAC game. Florida A&M and Morgan State, 1 o'clock. The Rattlers and the Bears next week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Yeah, what a great atmosphere it was last week, homecoming at Morgan State. They got their first win of the year. They dedicated uh, two statues in Memorial Plaza. Really an outstanding day. And, of course, here we are at another homecoming day this afternoon here, a special afternoon at Howard. Homecoming, just not a day, but a whole week worth of events started Monday night with a big pep rally where gave a lot of tickets away to their students and that was a big event for coach London he said a uh, lot of excitement for Howard of course they had the big win to start the season over UNLV one of the biggest upsets in college football history as far as point, point spread was concerned they were like 43 point underdogs they go out to UNLV and shock everyone and win that game to start the college football season it's just absolutely remarkable what Mike London has already done I mean, they were 3 and 19 combined over their last two years coming into this season they've already won three games this season of course tackle for a loss there's no one better at that than Morgan State they lead the FCS and tackles for a loss. That's what they do best. And going at it, Carl Garns is one of the best to go up there and really make it difficult for Philia. When you think about physicality defensively, you always think about the guys up front, but there is Carl Garns. He's a defensive back, and he plays a very physical game, and he brought some punishment there. Well, look at Newton. What's he going to dial up here with a third and 13? A couple of... More tackles for a loss. They lead the country, does Morgan State now. Here comes pressure and a sack on Newton. Down he goes. And that is Franklin. Franklin has two and a half sacks now on the season. 
6'3", 280-pound senior with a big sack of Newton, and now 18 sacks for the Morgan State team on the season. And we talked about the aggressive nature of Morgan State rushing the passer, but they only rush three men on that play, and Franklin overwhelms a double team and gets the sack. They rank third in the MEAC in sacks. Boy, the defense gets after them. Fourth and 20 from the 19, and the Bison will have to punt the football away. No score, first quarter. Ball bounces off a player and gets out of bounds at the 48-yard line. That's where Morgan State will have it on offense for Fred T. Ferrier and Coach London. No score, Morgan State and Howard on the Sports Fever Television Network. From their own 48. Time out on the field. The Bears' defense has been aggressive against Howard, and they have the football back. Let's see what Elisha Staley can do offensively, starting from his own 48-yard line. Staley play action. He's going to keep it and fire. Has the completion on the far side to Poteet. Poteet with the grab, his 14th catch of the season, and gets a first down. Another. Explosive play. Anything over 20 yards is explosive, and they didn't have a lot in the beginning of the season. They didn't score. This offense didn't score the first three games, and now the offense is going. That's right. Confidence so big. What a catch there by Poteet. I mean, that was a great throw. It was put where only he could make the play, but Poteet really did a great job of high-pointing that football. Poteet only had one catch last week, but it was a big one. It went for a touchdown. So first and 10 for Staley. Bison 33-yard line, and the flag falls. That's going to be a penalty on Morgan State. And yeah, when you make a catch like that last Woodville, which Poteet made, you get a little antsy, and he jumped there prior to the snap of the football. Penalties is something they have tried to improve. The Bears determined to get better. They had a lot of penalties in their first game of the season, and every week they have been doing better. They're averaging about 85 yards a game in penalties. This is Herb Walker Jr. Nowhere to go. A tackle for a loss for the Bison defense. Able to track down Herb Walker Jr. in the backfield. Great pursuit there by the Bison. Now, this is one of those plays. There wasn't much room up the middle. And it's still lowering his head and barreling forward. Here uh, you see Walker trying to turn it to the outside. And he loses a few yards in doing so. Bison defense have, has given up a lot of yards, but this is a unit that Coach Mike London really is working hard. London is a defensive-minded guy. Of course, played at Richmond, played in the NFL, Cowboys, coached at Richmond, coached at the University of Virginia. He was coaching the University of Maryland before coming to Howard. Elijah Staley will try to get some yards back. He gets up to the 35-yard line, closer to the original line of scrimmage. Motley makes the stop for the Bison. Staley's been a very effective runner here today. That first read option run was outstanding around the left side, but he's a big body coming up the middle. He's the kind of guy as a defender you'd rather not have to bring him down. These are the down and distances that Coach Fred T. Ferrier doesn't like so much. A third and 12 for his Bears. Ball in the Bison 35 yard line. Two wideouts, top of your screen. Staley to throw, has time, fires across the middle, and the ball was batted down and incomplete. Looking for Bailey. Good job by the Bison defense to deflect, deflect that one from Bailey. It's the second time we see the name of Marcellus Allison, a linebacker there, playing in a zone look. They did blitz one linebacker, still only brought four on the rush, and Allison was able to knock it away for a second time today. Allison, the 6'4 sophomore from Durham, North Carolina. Fourth down coming up for the Bears. Ball's on the Bison 35-yard line. They're lining up like they're going to go for it. Eight 12 yards for a first down. Here's a big fourth down for Staley. Pump fakes. Fires. Deep side. Going to the end zone. Incomplete. Staley going fast, deep. Incomplete. Looking for David. 6'3", 205-pound junior. And that's the end of 3.30-16 to go in the first quarter. We'll step aside. No score between Howard and Morgan State. STN is brought to you by Morgan State University and Howard University. The Bison and the Bears, no score. People still filing into Green Stadium. 
Not going to be much of a seat left. Oh, trying a little trick play. Johnson was trying to throw it back to Newton, and that went nowhere. Open up by the Bears, number 91, Julian Jacobs, the penalty on the field. Penalty marker down. We'll have to wait and see what our referee, and Troy Singleton has come up with. They yeah, said the ball was batted. Julius Jenkins was able to knock that football away. And we'll see on this penalty, of course, Howard has pretty good field position after Morgan went for it there on fourth down and 12. An interesting decision early in the game to do so instead of trying a pooch punt to pin them back deep. And in the end, Morgan State went for the deep pass down the sideline and just did not connect. I think a couple of things. Fred T. Fer Ferrier is feeling good about the way his offense is playing and better yet, the way his defense is played so far early in this first quarter with 3-10 remaining in quarter number one. So we have a disqualification of a player for Morgan. I believe they said number 42. We'll have to wait and see exactly and double check to see what player was ejected from the game from our referee Singleton. Dante Small came off the field, number 26, there on the far sideline. But this is a first down ball right at midfield now. Let's see what Newton can do with it. Pressure comes, fires, has the completion and the first down across the middle and hits Anthony. And there is Morgan State's Dante Small leaving the game ejected for the penalty. Well, Morgan State came with a blitz there, and Howard was able to hit him over the middle. That's the kind of play they were prepared for defensively coming into this game. How good is Kyle Anthony? Already a couple big catches. Newton, pressure comes. Has to tuck it and falls forward and gets a yard. Boy, we just mentioned Julian Jenkins, and he bought... Uh, brought the pressure, he beat the offensive guard there on the left side of the line, busted through, and he forced Newton to get off of his spot. As look at this Jenkins, I mean, he just runs right through a double team, and Newton is going to run away from pressure, and a pass play turned into a run very quickly. Oh, second and nine now. Newton will keep it himself, straight up the middle, has running room, loses the football, the ball's on the turf. They're fighting for it. Morgan State had it, but then... Howard fell on it. Morgan had it for a second. The ball got free, and Howard catches a break. They'll have the football at the 20-yard line after recovering the Newton fumble. Yeah, you can tell that right now Carl Gardner made that great tackle and strip. He's frustrated. He's the player that really had a chance to pick up that football as it was there, but Howard was able to recover. Murray was the one that picked it up for Howard, saving the day. But Garn's such a physical player, and you see it torn away there. And it looked to our eye from up here like he had jumped on that football, but he just did not get to it. He had three, forced three turnovers at the defense last week. Newton, Filia goes straight ahead and falls forward for four yards. And look at Forrest, this defense held Townsend only 102 yards in a game earlier this year. And last week, even though they gave up 28 points, it was a game in which they had seven sacks and they had the turnovers as you just spoke of. Second down coming up for the Bison. Ball on the Bears 19 yard line. No score, 135 to go first quarter. Newton. Pressure comes, rolls out, eyes down the field. He's going to keep and run. He's so dangerous with his legs, and he's in the end zone for a 19 yard oh, touchdown oh, run nice. by yeah. Newton. And that's his eighth rushing touchdown of the season. Newton was in trouble, and his legs bailed him out. Boy, that's not how they drew it up as Morgan State got great interior pressure, as we've seen many a time today. But Newton incredibly spinning away, and once he got to the sideline, he was gone. He leads the team in rushing. Howard leads the MEAC in rushing, and a lot of it is because of number three. What a run. He's 5'11", his brother Cam Newton is 6'5". That's the difference between the Newton brothers. The point after is up. And it is good. So Howard strikes first on homecoming with a 19-yard touchdown run by Newton, his eighth rushing touchdown of the season. 7-0 Howard Lee. Yeah, here comes that rush right up the middle. He's able to spin away. 
And there, number 10, Malachi Washington of Morgan State was unable to hold contain. And with that, Newton was able to get around him and find the pay dirt there on an outstanding 19-yard run. Today's game on STN is brought to you by Washington Area Broadcast Sponsors, Radio 1, the D.C. Lottery, Hook and Reel Restaurant, the Cochran Firm. Their underwriting support enabled WJLA, ABC7, and News Channel 8 to bring you this important regional game of MEAC football between the Beltway rivals, Howard and Morgan State. Yeah, that's so great to see this game, of course, not only in the Baltimore market, up in the Pennsylvania areas as well, but those channels are bringing us the ball game here in the D.C. area. A good start. First, Morgan State drove the field. Look very sharp offensively, missed a 23-yard field goal, then Howard sputtered out with their couple of offensive opportunities. But then the legs of Newton leads them into the end zone with a 19-yard touchdown run, and the homecoming crowd is happy to see their Bison up 7-0. Yeah, this sets up a very important job uh, drive here for Morgan State to try to move the football, gain some momentum back after they had a really good start to this game. Herb Walker Jr. takes the kickoff, spins out at the 20-yard line, and he's down at the 22. That's Carl Garns return. Garns out to the 22-yard line with 119 remaining in the first quarter. That's where Morgan State will have the football. I think Morgan State's going to be very happy with how Elijah Staley has thrown the football here in this first quarter. He's looked confident. It seems like his footwork has been solid in the pocket, and therefore his uh, throws have been on target. And we'll see how aggressive they are in the pass game here on this important drive. It goes right along with what he did last week. He was 14 of 22, 220 in those three touchdowns. More importantly, no interceptions last week for Elijah Staley. First down, he'll throw the football. Has the completion, Eric Harrell. Harrell has the first down and more up to the 40-yard line. And a pickup of 18 yards, Staley to Harrell. And one thing you talked about in last week's broadcast, though, was how Staley had so many back shoulder throws that were successful. And that was one right there. As Harrell is stopping as he receives this pass, he gets a defender to run by him, and then he's off to the races for a nice pickup there, yards after the catch. First down from the 40 for Staley. Sends Jones in motion. Eric Harrell has the football, has running room, and tripped up at the 45-yard line, falls forward to the 47. Eric Carell with a good first down play. Boy, that was an important tackle there made by uh, Quinn and Hill here. As you see, Hill is bringing Harrell down with this diving tackle, just clipping the ankle. I think Harrell would have had a big gainer had that tackle not been made. 20 seconds remain here in the first quarter. Second and three. Staley trying to draw, draw Howard off sides, and that's Eric Corral running for a first down in Bison territory. Moves the sticks up to the 46-yard line. And that'll be the final play of the first quarter. So Newton, the 19-yard touchdown run, but Eric Corral and the Bears, they're believing and driving. And to the quarter number one, Howard with a 7-0 lead over Morgan State. Big crowd at Green Stadium, it's homecoming in Washington, D.C., Howard University. Today's game on SDN is brought to you by Chesapeake's Employers Agency, Good Companies, McCormick and Company, and Henderson Webb. Phil Shaner alongside Adam Cole, glad to be with you with MEAC Football on the Sports Fever Television Network. Here's the Howard Volleyball team, tops of the MEAC. Yeah, they got just, uh, they just got a great ovation here from the Green Stadium faithful. Look at Coach London. Trying to give Howard their first back-to-back MEAC win since 2014. Staley's pass complete. Brandon Jones with his second catch to the outside. Another thing, Howard has a real chance at once again, 3-3 three three coming into today's action, is to have a winning season, and they have not had one since the 2012 campaign. 3-19 yeah, the last two seasons for the Bison. So now a second down coming up for the Bears. Second and six. Staley fires across the middle. Has a man down to the 15-yard line. And the completion by Bailey. Bailey has been so big. The sophomore had a breakout game last week. He had five catches, a game-high 116 yards. 
That's the first time that a Bears receiver had over 100 yards receiving since 2015. Bailey with a big catch. Yeah, so Staley firing to Bailey, and that is the sixth completion already. Staley had 70 yards passing in the first quarter. Not bad, six of 10. Herb Walker Jr. with the football. It's the 15 yard line. So the Bears trying to answer with some points to answer that Newton 19 yard touchdown run. You know what's interesting, of the seven passes thrown that have been caught by Morgan State in this game, they've gone to six different receivers. Morgan State, 135 yards of total offense in that first quarter. Howard with 77 yards, but all that matters, it's on your screen there, the score, 7-0 Bison. Straight up the middle, Eric Harrell makes a move and he's in the end zone for the touchdown. Eric Harrell goes in from 15 yards. What a run by Harrell. That is Harrell's third touchdown of the season. Boy, this is the second time for Morgan State in the red zone today, and this time they pounded right in, and Harrell, such a big factor on this drive, and what a carry right up the middle. And now a chance to tie this thing up here. Rea will try the extra point for the Bears. Rea's kick is up, and it is good. And we are tied at 7-7. It was Eric Harrell with a nifty run into the end zone. The Bears and the Bison all tied up just underway in the second quarter. Morgan State, seven plays, 78 yards. Tie this football game over there, Corrells. 15-yard touchdown run. We got a 7-7 football game. Well, the offensive line had a great drive there. They're healthy once again for Morgan State for a first time, really, well, really now a second time in the last uh, four or five weeks, and it's really paying dividends. Ezard with the return for Howard. Hit at the 20, but still on his feet. And then whistled down at the 16-yard line. Zard on the return. Zard comes up. For the Bears, number 27. Returns it. The 16 yard line, that's where the Bison will have the football to try to answer that seven play, 78 yard drive by the Bears. And Kalen Newton, who made such an outstanding offensive play, kind of a one man band there to score on the last drive to give Howard the lead. He'll come back onto the field. He had four attempted passes in that first quarter, but he also had four runs. He is, as we talked about in our open, quite a dual quarterback threat. 27 yards rushing in that touchdown in the first quarter. That's why he is. Amazing that he's their leading rusher and one of the top rushers actually in the entire MEAC at a quarterback position. Newton going deep up top. Incomplete looking for a flag was looking for Anthony and a flag comes down for a hold. There's a penalty on the field. Well, Morgan Kyle State. Kyle Anthony's the guy they're always going to, especially deep down the field. Yeah, and, and we know that Morgan is a team that, that really is very aggressive defensively. We spoke to that point, and here was another play in which they show that man-to-man -man across the board. They throw deep down the field and a hold down the field. And they are going to get pass interference, not just a defensive holding, so it's going to be a 15-yard penalty, and that time it was uh, D.J. Johnson that uh, got that hold. They are aggressive with their safeties. A lot of times they like to do a lot of things. And again, they lead the FCS in tackles for a loss. Sometimes when you're that aggressive, you can get burned. Newton going up top again. And the pass is incomplete. For Ezard across the middle, over through him. And a great example of it is uh, even this next play, Morgan State. You have five, or I should say, uh, you have 10 of your 11 defenders within five yards of the line of scrimmage, and that pass over the middle, uh, if it was on target, it could have been a big play. Ezard, four catches, 104 yards last week in their win over Delaware State. Philia with the carry, and not much there. Good job by the Bears. Make sure Phil Yaw didn't get much more than the line of scrimmage. And George Ramos this time busts through. So we have seen almost every player on the Bears defensive line make a play. And here we are just a few minutes into the second quarter. Ramos with 18 tackles on the year. Third down coming up. Newton to throw the football. 
trying to look for some room. Looking downfield, has a receiver and a completion close to the first down. Gillespie with the catch. Gillespie, that's his ninth catch of the season. And that's enough for a first down. Got it right at the sticks, and that moves the chains. That's a big play as Newton spinning around, as you can see. He was in some trouble there, able to find time, kept his eyes up looking down the field. Again, trying to go back to Gillespie, and it was knocked down. Well, that would have been a big play. Gillespie probably would have went to the house if that ball wasn't knocked down. Nice play by Donovan Jackson to make uh, that play. Remember, Dante Small, one of the defensive backs for Morgan State, has been thrown out of this game. So they're a little bit thin there uh, in the secondary. Donovan Jackson recorded his second interception of the season. He picked off Savannah State's quarterback last week. Newton will keep it. Not much there. That'll get a little chippy down there on the line of scrimmage. You're going to see that. This is a Beltway rivalry. These two teams are not that far apart from each other. It's true. Baltimore and D.C., it's, it's not a long drive. But Morgan State, one thing they're being able to do here in this game is they're stopping that run right up the middle. Howard is not gashing them up the gut at all in this contest. Third and ten for the Bison. All in their own 42-yard line. Will the Bears bring the pressure? Newton has time to throw the football. Looking downfield, going deep, has a man wide open. Touchdown! What a big play by Ezard with the touchdown grab. Just like that, Newton bought time and went for the touchdown. Boy, Newton's done such a great job of that here over the last few drives, keeping plays alive, and this time he's able to take the deep shot, and it's something that's hurt Morgan State all year, that big play, and Howard's able to hit it. Jaquez Ezard, that's his second touchdown grab of the season. Bufsky on for the extra point. Kick is up by Lebuski, and it is good. Newton goes deep for the touchdown, and the Bison back on top, 14-7. There he is going up top for six. Fourteen seven. Well, Newton has run for a touchdown, has thrown a touchdown. He's had a lot of Bears chasing him down, and I tell you, he's a true freshman. He was playing high school football last year in Atlanta, Georgia, <laughs> and he's out here playing college football at a pretty high level with some guys chasing him down. He's done a nice job. The poise of Newton is what I'm impressed with so far in this game. See what Morgan State could do on the return. Good return by White. It's a football out across to the 35-yard line. White's return. There's a penalty marker down on the field. Next week, back in Baltimore, Maryland, Morgan State University, Florida A&M makes the trip up to Baltimore. Florida A&M and Morgan State next week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Yak football, 1 p.m. kickoff next week. We look at Morgan State's schedule the rest of the way. Florida A&M at home and then a trip to Thune Cookman, then at Delaware State, and then they finish the season against Norfolk State. After the season, starting the season 0-5, Coach Fred T. Ferrier wants to start putting some wins together. When Morgan State was hoping to get a late hit penalty on that return, but instead it's the opposite, a hold against. So they're going to have to start deep within their own territory at their own 14-yard line here, trailing by seven. So the penalty on White, the return, or the I say the return by White was brought back with a holding call. So now back to the 14. Eric Carell has the touchdown for Morgan State. The last offensive set. Staley fires in and out of the hands and nearly caught. Great coverage. 
He fired that football looking for DJ Trigg, who couldn't hold on to it, the redshirt sophomore from Florida. All right, this is called a tight window right here. Look at this. I mean, there were three bison around him, and it was a perfect pass, but with so many players right there, Trigg, I think, uh, got a little bit distracted and could not bring it in. It's that strong left arm of Staley, who's not afraid to throw it into those tight windows. That's why he has nine picks this year, because sometimes not the best idea. Staley goes straight ahead and nowhere to go. The bison get him in the backfield. Had an option there to give it to Harrell or keep it himself. Probably picked the wrong choice. Yeah, but uh, you got to give it up to Howard and how they're tackling Stanley these last few rounds. He's such a tall guy. It's like a tree. You want to chop him down from the from beneath. You don't want to try to bring him down from up top. And they've been able to hit him low and take him down. Third and 11 for the Bears. Their own 13-yard line. Staley looking, firing. Has the completion to Poteet. Poteet gets out of bounds. Fourth down, short of the first. And even though that's a nice play, it's short of the sticks by a yard because of the field position here. Oregon State's going to have to punt, and that's a big stop by Howard after the long touchdown pass to get a three and out and get your offense right back on the field. Ten yard pickup on that pass play for Fred T. Ferriers. Bears, Staley to Poteet, but not enough for the first down. So we'll have to punt the football back to the Bison. Ezard's back there to get it. He has the touchdown catch. The football is out. Morgan State fighting for the football. We'll have to wait for the officials to come up. Azar dropped that football. And there is a scrum at the 35-yard line. Morgan State celebrating, and they've got the football. Let's see if the officials agree, and they do. Morgan State football. Boy, what a huge break, and I didn't see 100% here. Let's take a look, but on this punt, uh, if a fair catch is being called for, it doesn't appear to be the case, and that's one right there where I think uh, Izzard's got to try to call for fair catch with two Morgan State defenders right there. He tries to make a move before he even caught it and ends up really not uh, being able to bring that in. There's a penalty marker down on the field as the Howard sideline was not happy with that call. Mike London gets flagged for the penalty. He's pleading his case down there on the sidelines, and Coach London is hot right now. He knows how key that turnover is. Set the Bears up in Bison territory at the 20-yard line after the penalty by Coach London. He's still trying to plead his case. He's a former police officer in Richmond on the crime unit in Richmond before he got into coaching. And there he was trying to plead his case right there for his team. But the turnover stands, and Morgan State has a great opportunity to try to tie this football game. Eric Correll, inside run. Good run, four-yard carry by Harrell. Like the way he hops into that hole. That's right. And just think about how important this turnover is in the game because Howard was going to have very good field position. They had just scored in a long touchdown pass, a chance to make it a two-score lead. But now we're seeing Harrell kind of shuffling his way forward and Morgan State in the red zone for a third time in this game looking to tie it. Eric Correll outside looking for running room. Penalty marker is down, and he is dragged out of bounds on the far sideline. Now at the 12-yard line, we'll have to wait for the penalty marker. That's usually where a hold would be called. Let's see. There's a holding penalty on the Bears. That'll move Morgan State back. And that's a spot of the foul penalty, so that's going to be called from right at the line, not where this run ended. And yeah, therefore, it's going to be second down and long. Well, second down for the Bears. Staley fires over the head of his tended receiver, Poteet, down at the four-yard line. And that ball was 
again, very close to being picked off. Stanley over, overshot Poteet. Yeah, Poteet was there, but uh, you got to throw it over the linebackers and underneath the safety. It's a tough throw. It was a little bit high, and Poteet actually becomes a defender here. Look, he leaps up and tips it away, or that may have been an interception there for Aaron Walker, the safety of Howard. Walker was right there, and that ball wasn't tipped by Poteet. It would have been a pick. So now a third and 16. All the 26. Pressure. Staley has to get rid of it before he was sacked. Throws it short of his intended target. Now a fourth down coming up for the Bears. Wow, this is a freshman lineman here in Aaron Motley that gets the pressure. It's only a four-man rush. And uh, once again, they get Staley on the move, which is what you want to do defensively against Morgan State because of the size of Staley. It looks like they're going to try a field goal here. Alex Rea will be on to try this field goal. 43-yard attempt. Bears have missed one already in this game. See what Rea can do here from 43 yards with 9.19 to go second quarter. Rea's kick is up, the 43-yarder, and it is no good. So Howard keeps their 14-7 lead. The Sports Fever Television Network. Today's game on STN is brought to you by Morgan State University and Howard University. Coach Fred T. Farrier's Bears have made three trips to the red zone and only one time they scored two missed field goals and the Harrell touchdown. So one of three in the red zone. Anthony Filia, running room, leaps over a player. Oh, my! Well, I'll tell you, Mike London, head coach, he was really fired up after that missed field goal by Morgan State. And he got this crowd and his team really going. Watch this. And, and here with this leap, this is taking things to the next level here for Philia. This is why he was the preseason MEAC player of the year. Philia dives over, jumps over a player before he was out of bounds at the 50. Illegal procedure by Howard will move them back. Phil Yao last year did not play in the Morgan State game in Baltimore. That was a big, big loss for them. Missed the game for disciplinary reasons. A game that Morgan State won on Eric Correll's touchdown in the final 30 seconds last year in Baltimore. So the penalty moves them back five yards, first and 15. From their own 45-yard line. Newton has one touchdown pass, one rushing touchdown. Goes up top again for Anthony. And it was underthrown and nearly picked off by Carl Garns on the coverage of Kyle Anthony. A lot of times in a football game, you might see a team take somewhere in the range of two to four deep shots down the field. But we can tell what Howard is trying to do against this aggressive Morgan State defense. They're trying to get the receivers, especially Anthony there, one-on-one -on -one with the safeties. They are going deep early and often. Second and 15 after that incompletion deep down the field to Anthony. Give to Anthony Filia. Filia has some running room in the Bears territory. Has the first down before he was dragged out of bounds. And there's a penalty marker down on the 40-yard line after that 18-yard run by Filia. Have to see this could be a face mask on that tackle. Wait for the penalty marker. Came down right at the 40. That was one of the best runs of this game, a design run, not just a scramble we've seen from Howard. And yeah, there it is, the face mask penalty. No doubt about it. It actually was not the official closest to the play that made that call, but a correct call nonetheless when it's all said and done. Penalty on the Bears. Give the Bison, Bison better field position after that y'all run. Wortham with the call. Goes around the outside. And Wortham gets his first carry of the day. Wortham close to a first down. Well, you can see they're starting to work the left side of the Morgan State defense here on consecutive carries. And uh, Wortham, a nice job to get into the secondary, to find the corner, get outside. Because Morgan State is very formidable defensively up the middle. 
Newton. Strung out, trying to find some running room, and the Bears say no to that. They get him in the backfield for a three-yard loss, another tackle for a loss for the Morgan State Bear defense. And we've seen Newton run many a time today, but that was actually a designed run. We've seen him run in spots where he was looking to pass the start. And uh, you called it strung out. That's what they were able to do. And you love to see for Morgan State the ability to have multiple helmets around the football. Third down for Howard, trying to add to their 14-7 lead. Newton fires. They're going to call it a catch right at the sticks. What an outstanding catch to go down and grab that ball. That was two freshmen connecting. That was Justin Dooley, the freshman. And watch this. Let's take another look as he's going to lay out and uh, bring that in. And he's very close to a first down. It looks like he may just be short, though. And this is going to be decision time. It's a one possession game, 14 7, Howard leading. If you're going to go for fourth and inside a yard, is, we'll see if they are going to actually measure to check it. Now they will. Freshman to a freshman, Newton to Dooley for Coach London. He has a lot of young players. The way the season started off, a lot of hype. They, we mentioned the big win at UNLV. And then they went to Kent State, almost got that win. Now they're sitting at three and three, trying to win back-to-back -back games in the MEAC. That hasn't happened since 2014. And this Howard football program has been struggling. They're trying to get it turned around. This is going to be fourth down in inches, and it appears like they're going to go for it. Yeah, I'm not surprised with this type of offense. They lead the MEAC in just about every offensive category. They're fourth down coming up. Newton to fill y'all with the pitch. Running hard inside the 10 yard line and got the first down. So far this season now, eight of 17 on fourth downs. A right, great job there. You don't see on fourth and inches a team line up in the shotgun all that often, but they do so there, does Howard. And Philio was able to make the first man miss in Ian McBorough. And when he did so, he had enough to get the first down. First and goal now for the Bison. And add to their 14 7 lead. It's about six minutes to go before the half. Nowhere to go there. Newton just ran into a bunch of white jerseys. Nowhere to go for Newton that time. Second down coming up. One of Morgan State's best defenders, Rico Kennedy. Watch, he is able to stay on the outside. I think that Newton wanted to pitch that to his left, but Kennedy forced him to run that ball right into the heart of the defensive line. Kennedy had nine tackles and a sack. Last week, he leads the team with 38 tackles. Nine tackles for a loss. Of course, that's Morgan State's defense of specialty, tackling for the loss. Newton to throw the football. Here comes some pressure. Steps up in the pocket. The ball's out. Morgan State falls on it. There's penalty markers down at the 12-yard line. We'll have to see what the officials come up to see if Newton's pass he was throwing that football if it came out early. Yeah, and another aspect here is that uh, Terod Roberts is the man that recovered that, but he re when he recovered it, he did not have a helmet, and uh, th that's an illegal participation play if that is the case, because if you lose your helmet, you're supposed to stop playing immediately. This could be a really tough break for Morgan State. We'll see what Ann Troy Singleton, our official, comes up with for today's game, talking with his crew. Let's hear from him. The offsetting penalties here, Phil, and take a look here at number 63, and the helmet's gonna pop right off but when it does so, the play should be over as Roberts both forced the fumble and then jumped on it. It's a big break for Howard that that actually occurred because it really should have been Morgan's football. Right, Adam. Huge break for the Bison. Offsetting penalties and redo it like that play never happened. Second and goal. Newton. Corners end zone. Fires. One-handed catch, but he was out of bounds. Is incomplete. What a catch. 
but ran out of real estate with a one handed grab. What an athletic play there by uh, Eastern here but uh, I think that uh, the receiver in this situation may have jumped a little bit too early. Let's take a look as there's the outstanding jump but he's coming down and uh, Ezra with an incredible play and he may have gotten a foot down. He definitely uh, was able to land but maybe was out of bounds when he brought it in. That was very close. Great play though. Ezra already has one touchdown pass from Newton this game. Kyle Anthony wide open and Newton misses him. He was wide open at the back corner of the end zone. And Newton just missed his top target, big number 81, Kyle Anthony. That would have been six. Undoubtedly. Newton, Newton would love to have that one back. Look how wide open he was. Yeah, Carl Garns, I think he went to, to try to slow down Anthony prior to that pass, and Anthony went right around him. Yeah, now it's field goal time here for Howard. 26-yard attempt by Dakota Lebowski. Two of five in field goals. He's had two blocked. His longest is a 44-yarder. Lebowski's kick is up, and it is good. Give him three. Howard puts three more on the board. Howard with a 17-7 lead over Morgan State on the Sports Fever Television Network. Dakota Lebowski's 24-yard field goal for Howard. There. Well, you see it kind of disappear right behind that left goal post. Don't you there, Phil, as he just snuck in at a, if that's a 30-yard field goal, it's probably wide left. Today's telecast of the NCAA HBCU Division I college football games is possible because of the partnership between Sports Fever, Sports Fever Television Network and Sinclair Broadcasting Group stations in Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Harrisburg, and Johnstown. Well, there was a personal foul penalty after that kick. So right here, Howard is going to be kicking off from midfield. Morgan State down 17-7 after that field goal. 5-17 to go before the half. The kick is taken by White. White hit immediately and not much of a return. Across the 10 to the 12-yard line. That's where the Bears will have the football offensively. Boy, a great job on that kick to pin Morgan State back. When you're kicking off from midfield, it was a high end over and kick towards the corner. And White just did not have uh, really anywhere to go. Five twelve remain in this second quarter. The Bears need to get their offense going again. Eric Correll with the touchdown today for Morgan State. Newton with a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown. And a field goal for Howard's their scoring. First and 10 for the 13 for Staley. Staley will give Herb Walker Jr. spins. Still on his feet. Nice first down run. Nine yard pickup. And a nice spin move by Herb Walker Jr. And I like this seal block by number 77, the left tackle, Bruce Trigg, as it comes back his way. Watch Trigg just seal off that hole, and it opens it up there for a nice run for Walker on first down. Second and one for the Bears. Walker, right side, cuts back inside and has the first down. That'll move the chains for a Bears first down and Herb Walker Jr.'s two-yard pickup. Clock ticking down to about four and a half minutes to play here, but you have plenty of time if you're Morgan State. They still have all three of their timeouts, so no need to be in a hurry here in this part because this is a big drive to try to get a score of some kind, and you might be able to get into the break down just one score in the game. Three wideouts, bottom of your screen for Staley, looking that way. Now he'll run the football. Slides down, close to the 30-yard line. Pick up with four yards. On Staley's keeper and slot. The devices, number 99, Tyree Leonard, on the Leonard made the stop for Howard. One thing you like about Staley today, he's been very decisive in the pocket and there decided to tuck it and run and made a play in which there was not much out there for him to work with into a four yard gain. Second down now for Staley. Seems that the Bears are confused. Just get this playoff in time. 
Herb Walker Jr. goes nowhere. It's like there was a delay and confusion on that play by Morgan State. Yeah, they actually had too many men on the line of scrimmage. They had a few wide receivers that were right on the line, so they needed the wide out on the far side of the field, which is uh, Bailey, to actually step off the line to make that illegal play. Third down now for Morgan State. They're at 33% this year on third downs. Third and a long seven for him. Staling fires in and out of the hands. That would have been a first down, but incomplete. Looking to get the ball to Gentry, who dropped it. Second drop of this quarter for Morgan State, and that's a spot where Howard only rushes three, so they dropped eight in coverage. Staley made a great throw. They were going to have the first down and more, but Gentry could not bring it in. Well, fourth down, and Morgan State will have to punt the ball back to Howard. Ezard's back there, who has the touchdown catch from Newton. Receive the punt. High punt. The ball's going to bounce at the 42 yard line. Everybody stays away, and the Bears touch it at the 43. And that's where Howard will have the football with 2.48 to go before the half and a 17 7 lead. Well, going into today, we talked about the special teams and that Morgan State has blocked a few punts over the last few weeks here. And that last kick, Requaz Brandon on special teams for Howard. He nearly got a hand on that football. Today's game on STN is brought to you by Up and Smoke Barbecue, Smoothie King, Miss Shirley's Cafe, and National Aquarium. First and 10 for Newton and his Bison in the 43. Newton fires going up top. Incomplete. Newton's pass is incomplete. Looking for Ezard again, and there's a penalty marker down in the backfield. And they dropped this flag well after the play was over. Newton, a great job there to step up into the pocket, and we'll see if he was hit well after that throw. They're going to rule that against Howard. That'll move Howard back. Second down again for the Bison. May have been a play after the play was over. Once again, that flag was dropped probably three or four seconds after that ball fell incomplete. Second and 26. Newton going to keep it. Still on his feet. Falls across the 30, down to the 32-yard line. Pulled the ball away from Filiao and kept it himself. And they really ran into each other. It almost looked like a spare in bowling, but they were just able to stay on their feet right here. And Newton kind of pushes Philly out forward to be a blocker for him. And because of that, they were a bit disjointed on that carry. Only a gain of five. Third down now for Howard. Newton threw for over 3,000 yards and 33 touchdowns at Grady High in Atlanta. Here he is a true freshman lighting up the MIAC. Newton looking downfield, throws the football away. He's under pressure, didn't want to take the sack. Closest receiver was Gillespie. Rico Kennedy got a good pop on Newton there, who was just throwing it away. Kennedy certainly has emerged as a playmaker. The sophomore linebacker leads this team in tackles. He gets after it. Newton takes a big hit. Yeah, Newton was in the air there, and Kennedy got right into his Right into his midsection with that pop. Fourth down. Howard will punt the football away with 1.52 to go before the half. Green Stadium is packed. They're on the hills. They're all over the place trying to get a look at this homecoming game. And they're Bison with a 17-7 lead. Boski will punt the football away. Takes a Howard roll all the way down to the 30 continues to roll down to the 26 yard line sometimes on these brand new artificial turf fields a line drive kick can turn into a really good one morgan state with 139 to work with before the half 
you know, you look around here, Phil, the only seats, the sections that are open, you think, boy, what, why is no one sitting the there? The band. Yeah, that's where the bands are supposed to be. And, of course, they're getting ready for their halftime shows, which is such an important aspect of the pageantry of every college football game, but especially on homecoming. A lot of people outside of the gate that couldn't get a ticket that are watching here through the fence at Green Stadium. Packed weekend for homecoming for Howard, and right now they're happy with their bison trying to get their fourth win of the season up 17-7. Let's see what Morgan State could do. Staley fires in the completion across the 30-yard line. The catch was made by Bailey. Bailey now 20 Bailey catches on the season. Yeah, remember, Morgan State has all three of their timeouts here. It looks like Howard's playing very soft defensively, only rushing three. Second down and four. Bailey fires the completion made to David. He is down at the 35-yard line, but stays in bounds. The clock continues to roll after David's catch. David had two catches for 48 yards last week in their 48-point performance against Savannah State, the most points they've scored. It's 2014, that offensive performance last week. Eric Correll with the football. Close to the 40-yard line before he's tackled. Correll tackled just shy of the 40. Boy, this might be a time to use a timeout right here, but that clock is still on the run inside 50 seconds. Clock rolling at 45 seconds before the half. Second and seven after Harrell's three-yard gain. Staley. Poteet with the completion gets out of bounds and the first town. You always think in football, if I've got a guy deep down the field that he's tackled, it's going to take a long time to get there. That's when I use my timeout. But a lot of times in the college game, in a spot where the clock stops, when you get a first down, if you get a three or four yard gain, that's actually the best time to use a timeout because 15 to 20 seconds will run off before your next play. 35 seconds to go. Staley. Throws far sideline, has the completion, and more importantly, gets out of bounds after the catch from Bailey and another first down. Out of bounds at the 35-yard line. I know that Morgan State has missed two field goals today, but their kicker does have a big leg, so they're starting to get onto a, or, or to a part of the field here where you can start thinking about getting another field goal opportunity. Longest kick this season for a Morgan State kicker was 40 yards. First and ten, Staley to run the football. He has running room, has a first down and more. Penalty flags down as Staley gets out of bounds after a 12-yard pickup, 24 seconds on the clock. Two penalty markers down at the 30-yard line. Morgan State having some success with their hurry-up offense here in the final minute of this first half. Positive play will come back with holding on the Bears. Boy, that's a big call because Staley had busted through, but two flags flew after he got into the secondary on that carry. As that run put Morgan State right in the thick of field goal territory, but now just 24 seconds left, and they've got to make a play. Moving back to the 40-yard line, first and 15. Staley across the middle has the completion for the 20-yard line. That'll be a first down, a catch made by White. What a big throw there by Staley. You know, for Morgan State to get it to a one possession game is so big in this spot on this final drive, and that is an outstanding throw. Carving up the zone right into the middle of the field, and White was right there, and now you've got it in the red zone for a fourth time here in this game as a timeout, 16 seconds remain. Staley was such a big left arm his arm strength's incredible he can really fit it in and that was a laser laser shot to white coming up with the grab and the first down and now of course you're kind of limited you have you know what you can do with 16 seconds take some shots at the end zone there's a good look at staley coach fred t farrier looking at his play card with the ball sitting at the 19-yard line. Yeah, you don't have to go for the end zone right here. You have two or three plays, depending on how the play is run, to work with. Remember, you still have two timeouts left, so you've got a little time here, uh, so there's no doubt that you could try to work a play to the middle of the field and see if one of your guys can break a tackle and take it in. The only touchdown of the game for Morgan State was Eric Correll's 15-yard touchdown run. Tied the game at 7-7. Staley. 
throws end zone. Poteet incomplete. Had him. Had Poteet open, they could connect. And now 11 seconds remain before the end of the first half. Yeah, that's a tough touch throw. He's trying to throw it off his back foot after the play action, kind of fading away and uh, trying to lob it over the defender, but just a little too much on that toss. Poteet had his first touchdown catch of the season last week against Savannah State. Well, now you got 11 seconds left, and more than likely this will be the final offensive play before you put out the field goal kicker. Ball on the 19-yard line, second and 10. Staley. Throws in traffic and incomplete. Was looking for David. He was double covered. Good job by the Howard defense to break up that pass attempt to David. That play only took four seconds. You have seven seconds left. And you might want to take a shot in the end zone on a quick play. And it looks like the offense is going to stay out as, boy, that was a big pop defensively made by Brian Cook, the defensive back, a freshman from Cincinnati. A lot of freshmen on the Howard defense that are kind of learning as they go. More games, more experience. This is a play here, Fairwell Stanley's got to get rid of the ball right away. He can't run around in the pocket, and it looks like Morgan State's going to call a timeout here. Fred T. Ferrier will take a timeout to talk to Elijah Staley in his offense. The ball resting at the 19-yard line. His team trailing 17-7. He can't take a sack. He's got to try to get, as you said, the football. Take a shot in the end zone and get one of those touch pass plays that they back shoulder that they were so successful um, with last week. Speaking of last week, we'll be back in Baltimore next week. Florida A&M and Morgan State. MEAC football on the Sports Fever Television Network. Check us out. We'll be there next week, 1 o'clock kickoff for Florida A&M and Morgan State next Saturday. You know, there's no doubt you want to get a touchdown here if you're Morgan State, but the most important part of this play is that it takes six seconds or less to happen. You don't want to have a situation here where you don't get a chance to kick a field goal, and the offense is going to come back on the field. They're going to give it one more try here. Seven seconds remain before the half. On the 19-yard line. Third down for the Bears. Three wideouts, bottom of your screen. Staley, gonna go end zone, looking for David. Got him, touchdown, Morgan State. And there's a penalty marker down. David had to grab, but did he push off? Good chance that you're gonna see an offensive interference here. Let's see. No time left on the clock. The officials will talk it over. The 19 yard pass play from Staley to David. Boy, this could be a seven-point penalty. Mr. Singleton will tell us the verdict. So an offensive pass interference call. Well, we're going to see one untimed down. The ball's at the 34, meaning that this will be a 51-yard field goal. As you see the push off, the defender goes down, and there's the catch in the corner of the end zone. It was very close, and that is a big-time call in this game. Because it would be a 51-yard field goal here, it appears Morgan State's going to try to just throw this in the end zone one more time. Well, the touchdown to David doesn't happen because of the pass interference call, and Howard calls timeout. We will have an untimed down. Coach London wants to talk things over with his defense. Well, that's tough for Morgan State because not only do you not get the touchdown, but now it takes you out of field goal range. It would have been about a 36-yarder had that have just been an incomplete pass. And that pass play was very similar to the pass plays that they were hitting last week against Savannah State. The only problem there is David gave himself a little help there with the uh, pass interference, the offensive pass interference, but that is the type of play that they had a lot of success with last week with guys like Baldwin and David and also Jones, those type of pass plays. So now you have an opportunity to throw the football up in, in the end zone, maybe come down with the catch, or if there is a pass interference, you'll get another shot. Yeah, we saw that in the NFL game Thursday night, the Raiders and the Chiefs. I think they had four untimed downs at the end of the game before Oakland scored what would end up being the winning touchdown. So you never know. That's why you got to try to get that ball down there because obviously a penalty could keep it alive. If you get a pass interference, you could then bring in the field goal team and try to get three. 
Ball at the 34 yard line for this untimed down after the pass interference call. Staley. Short of the end zone and incomplete. That'll be the end of the first half. Howard on homecoming. As their crowd all fired up with a 17-7 lead over their Beltway arrival. Let's go down on the field to the coach. Thanks, Phil. Now, Coach, you have your defense has limited Morgan State to just one score and even all over Harrell and Walker. How pleased are you with their play in that first half? Well, you know, we want more. We want better. We want opportunities to get a sack. Uh, we got to make sure we make plays on, on those balls. He's throwing in the air right there. It's not, you know, contest those throws. Uh, he's, he's a big, big quarterback. He's got a long arm. Uh, but yeah, you're right, defense is playing well right now. We, we should have did a better job at the end right now with 2.48 left, not trying to go for all. We ended up giving the ball back to get to this situation. Should have ran the clock, and that's on me. But uh, our guys are playing well defensively. We get the ball back second half, so we just got to make our opportunities happen. And what does your team need to do in that second half to keep your lead and get the win today? Well, obviously they're, they're, they're stopping things that have been uh, productive for us, so we're going to have to make sure maybe it's more inside runs, maybe it's more play-action pass. But, you know, I believe our receivers can get downfield on their corners, so we may try to exploit that again. Thank you so much for joining me, Bill. Thank you very much, Danielle. Thank you, Coach London. And Coach London is happy with his Bison with a 17-7 lead at the half. Coming up on the Sports Fever Television Network halftime show of scores and highlights, Danielle will have some interviews down on the field. It's homecoming in Washington, D.C. The Bison are happy with their 17-7 lead over the Bears. We'll be back on the Sports Fever Television Network. Strike. Newton. Kyle Anthony. Anthony's third catch of this game. Howard with a 24-7 lead. Today's game on STN brought to you by Chick-fil-A, David Busters, Fairfield Inn and Suites, Adidas, and Enterprise. Morgan State has some work to do now. That explosive play by the Howard offense. They can score quick. Morgan has more plays. It doesn't seem like the Howard offense is on the field that long, but they can score in a hurry. The return, not much there for White. White with a short return, and Morgan State has some work to do. But let's go down to the field to Danielle Podlowski. Danielle? Thanks, Phil. Now, before the half, I spoke with Bears head coach Fred Ferrier, who says that for his team to get back in this game, they need to eliminate the penalties. He says that they are shooting themselves in the foot with all the calls. He also added that they need to keep Newton in the pocket and finish their drives. Phil? Thank you, Danielle. Morgan State flagged eight times for 98 yards. They're averaging about 85 yards a game on penalty. So that's over their average, eight for 98. And yeah, you got to clean that up. That's right? right. And finishing drives. They had four drives in the red zone and only scored once. Eric Correll still on his feet, but going backwards and then dives forward. That could have been a two yard loss. Turns into a short gain for Harrell. He was going the wrong direction. Really a great effort there made by Harrell, who's an outstanding back to fight back and get a yard because he was in deep trouble, but he's able to spin away and get a yard. What a great job Howard has done in their kick game, though. They've pinned Morgan State back many a time on kickoffs here today. Harrell, 36 yards in that first half and the touchdown. Give to Harrell there. He gets five yards on that carry, exploding through right up the middle for Eric Harrell. Harrell, the only touchdown. The game for Morgan State. It was a seven-play, 78-yard drive. Morell went in from 15 yards to tie the game at 7-7. Seven, seven. Third and six. Staley, middle, looking for Poteet and incomplete. So now we'll have to punt the football back. I would like to see a little more of a commitment to the running game. They, 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 last week, Herb Walker Jr. was able to run for over 100 yards. Eric Carell was able to run. And that, the ability to run seemed to set up the pass for yeah. them. Carell had just six carries in that first half. And here now a three and out. Morgan State to punt the ball back to Howard. Takes a bounce at the 42-yard line and ends up 
They punt us down inside the 45-yard line. 44 yard line. That's where Howard will have the football. Let's see what they can do. They didn't mess around to start the second half. Newton 75 yard Don't touchdown the pass to Anthony. Celebration Bowl. They're Only averaging 30 points a game. They're top of the MAC the in just about all the MEAC categories offensively. And this is all with a lot of young guys with a true freshman quarterback. And, you know, a new system in there. Mike London comes in, of course, as the head coach, but uh, Brandon Marion runs that go-go offense that you mentioned, Adam, and he comes in and just lighten up the MEAC right now with the offensive ability of the true freshman and, and the cast around him. You know, and it, it started right away. You would have thought a new cast of characters, new coaching staff, that it would have taken some time to find a rhythm offensively. That really has not been the case. Newton will throw. Ball is knocked away. Good job by Morgan State's defense to knock that one down. Looking for Jason Collins was the attendant receiver. And Garnes is all over the place. Boy, he is one heck of a corner. He really is. Uh, going back to Howard, though, they were a team uh, that coming into the season, uh, they played UNLV, that game we've been talking about. That was their first game of the year. And they really just outscored UNLV. I mean, they scored 43 points in a three-point win. Garns and all Miak third teamer last year as a sophomore. Nowhere to go that time for Newton. He's tackled at the 40 yard line. Great play by Rico Kennedy coming around the end there to make the sack. And Newton had a lot of time late in that first half to get the ball deep down the field. And as he steps up in the pocket, Morgan State wants to be there to knock him around. And Kennedy that time was able to beat his man and make the play. Kennedy has made some huge plays the last couple of weeks. He has dialed up his defense. Newton sets up the screen, has the completion. Up to midfield, be short of the first down. Gillespie makes the catch and gets up to midfield. The fourth down coming up. And that's a screen. Morgan State, we've talked about their aggressive nature, their blitzing style, but this time they do not blitz. They only rush three or four, and therefore they were set up to defend the screen with many defenders back and made the play, and it's now fourth down. Kudal Lebowski will come in to punt the football from his own 35-yard line for Howard. Back is White. He's been handling the kickoff and punt duties this week he got hit at the 40 yard line and there's a penalty that's going to be roughing the punter Roboski got bopped Boy, at 40. Morgan State has blocked multiple punts in consecutive weeks but what a collision there no doubt about it and the punter is down they had two there's an injured player will step aside and come back with Howard up 24-7 the Sports Fever Television Network. Morgan State with three block punts in the last two games, but they didn't get the block that time. They got the interference call. Punter interference running into Dakota Boski. So now Howard with the football. Newton keeps it up the middle to the 30-yard line. That keeps Howard's drive alive after roughing the punter call. It was interesting because the snap was high, so Lebowski kind of double pumped it. He caught it above his head, took a lot of time to get rid of it, and it ended up being beneficial to Howard because he was hit while kicking that football. Second and six. Jordan Scott in the backfield now for Howard, and Scott doesn't have it. Newton pulls it away, and Scott took a hit, but Newton dive forward for two yards. What a great fake that was for the football there by Newton because once again, uh, Scott got hit extremely hard trying to take that up the middle. Of course, he didn't have the football. And now with a lead, Howard's going to try to start running the ball more often. They've really thrown it more often here this afternoon, but that'll probably change as we get deeper in this contest. Third and four for Howard. Newton, pocket collapses on the footballs. 
on the turf, but recovered by Howard. He was knocked out. The Bears were coming hard after Newton. Big blitz, and once again, Rico Kennedy, a second sack of the second half. But I'll tell you this, and if you throw an incomplete pass there, more than likely, you're going to go for fourth down on fourth and four from around the 30-yard line. Now it's fourth down at about 12, and we'll have to see what Howard's going to do here. How about 20 sacks on the season for Morgan State this year? <laughs> Third in the MIAC in sacks, 20 of them now coming into this one. Newton with the pooch punt. Bounces at the 15-yard line, rolls down to the 10. And that's where Morgan State will have the ball offensively. So got to credit the Bears' defense for ratcheting it up a little bit, making some big plays and getting the ball back for their offense. We really need the football down 24-17. Yeah, no doubt about it, you're down 17 points in this spot. How about Newton punting the ball twice in this game? He's looking more like a, a longtime old Redskins quarterback here in D.C., Sammy Ball. He's doing a little bit of an all, throwing, running, and kicking. Let's see what Elijah Staley can do. If his team needs a second-half comeback. And yeah, they've been pinned back here inside their own 20 quite a few times today. Staley with the completion out to Bailey. Bailey has a 14-yard pickup. And stops the 25-yard line with Bailey's catch. That's a good throw, especially to start a drive like this. Get the quarterback in rhythm, little stop route right at the chains. And that pass was not only on target, but it was right on time. Bailey with four catches today for 63 yards, He's leading the Bears with receptions and receiving yards. The sophomores really have been standing out the last couple of weeks. Inside run doesn't go anywhere for the Bears. I'm impressed with the way that Howard has played defensively on a defensive line to be able to stop the run on certain situations. You know, it's been the exact opposite of Morgan State in the nature of how they've played. They've played a bend but don't break defense. They get up some yards. Morgan State has moved the football. But time and time again, you've got the two field goal misses. Time running out at the end of the first half. Four times into the red zone. They've only scored one time. Staley has a wide open receiver. That's Bailey again with his fifth catch and gets the first down. He's out of bounds at the 43-yard line. So Bailey a couple of catches and... The Bears moving down the field, but to your point, Adam, yeah, they get to the red zone. There's two missed field goals, some missed opportunities, and those are the things as an offense you need to be able to strike and get points when you're in the red zone. And you notice on that pass play, it was the exact same play. They had just run to Bailey two plays prior with this soft zone. Howard is, uh, they're able to give up a few yards here and there. But well, once the time comes, they've been able to stiffen. Eric Harrell running straight forward. A good first down run by Harrell, close to midfield, brought down at the 48 yard line. The other thing is that if Morgan State scores, it's taking them a long time to do so. Now you have a quarter and a half left in this game. Plenty of time, you're down 17. But uh, they're putting in a lot of work. They're having to methodically move the football down the field while Howard is hitting them with big plays. Second and four. Harrell again, patient runner, but nowhere to run. He waited, he waited, but nothing opened up for Eric Harrell. Yeah, it was a great job by the defensive front of Howard sometimes. As a running back, you want to be patient. Le'Veon Bell is probably the most patient back. Pittsburgh's running back in the NFL right now. So many times he'll stop in the backfield and then skip forward. But that time, the defensive front of Howard just was overpowering as they moved Morgan State's offensive line backwards. It's a big third down. Morgan State just one of eight on third downs in the first half. You almost have to wonder. You're right in the middle of the field. If this is four down territory, probably not. But this is a... What a big play for Morgan State here. One of eight on third downs, a third and four for Staley. Fires down the field, down the 30-yard line. A lot of contact there looking for Baldwin, and it's incomplete. No penalty marker comes down. Baldwin was very active trying to get open on that play. And I think Fred Ferrer here is taking a little time to make a decision, and now he will send the punt team out. And I think that's the right play. You've still got some time in this game. Obviously, if there were seven minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, you go for it here. But you're still in the third quarter. And you can pin Howard back in this spot. 
Fourth and four from Morgan's 48 yard line will punt the football away. Jordan Scott will let this one bounce. And it's touched at the nine yard line. That's where Howard will have the football. Let's go down on the field. Danielle Pavlovsky has an injury report, Danielle. Thanks, Bill. We just saw Howard Sakura Lebovsky being helped off the field after taking that hard hit. He appears to be fine and has rejoined his teammates. It is likely that we will see him back on the field today. Bill. Thank you, Danielle. We could add Danielle to the injury report as well. <laughs> She's battling through the dreaded cold. Yes, she is. And it's that time of year with the weather changing. It got a little bit cooler, but now... It doesn't feel that way right now. It doesn't feel like a late October afternoon here in D.C., does it? 78 degrees and sunny. Mid-October. The homecoming crowd doesn't mind the heat because their bison are red hot. Up 24-7. Newton looking for more. Firing far sideline and incomplete. Well, you're not going to see a football game with a team taking more deep shots than Howard has today, are you? Once again, I mentioned it earlier, a lot of times an NFL team tries to take a few deep shots per game. Howard takes a few deep shots in every one of their drives. And this is going to be an interesting penalty call here. Justin Dooley, the freshman, was the attended receiver. And Newton's trying to hook up with Dooley a couple of times. And it looks like a player has been disqualified here from this game here for Howard. That's two players now that have been disqualified from the game. The first half a Morgan State player was ejected and now here in the third quarter. Well, did they point the wrong way? Was it? No, it might be another Morgan State player that got ejected. Because they are walking. And I think it might be Lamont Hill, number 51. Boy, that's frustrating for Morgan State to have this happen twice in a game. Wow, Lamont Hill ejected. There was an ejection of a Morgan State player in the first half, so two players thrown out of this football game. Penalty markers all over the field on that run by Johnson. And, and you know what, we're gonna double check that. I don't know if it was Hill to be certain, so we're going to double check on uh, who was thrown out of this game. Looks like Jordan Cry, number 21, another linebacker. So offsetting penalties. So Jordan Cry was the player ejected, making it two players now for Morgan State. So many 15 yard penalties though for the Bears today. I mean, even another one on this play, even though it ends up uh, not going down as a penalty because of the offsetting penalties. 11 penalties now for Morgan State, well over 100 yards in penalty yards for the Bears. Howard keeps it on the ground. Wortham gets his second carry. Once again, we saw Fillion go out. For the Bears, number 17, Terod Roberts Jr. On the With tackle. an injury, you know, in the Game last drive, right before the long touchdown pass. So, therefore, we're going to see a lot more of Desmond Wortham. Second and six for 29. Give this time to Johnson. Johnson barrels his way up for a first down. For the Bears, to the 44-yard line. Darius Johnson on attack. With Phil Young out. You see Johnson getting more carries. And also Wortham. For the Bison, number four. Good hit there by Johnson. But stays on his feet, barrels through, the close Bears, to a first down in the Bears' territory. And Howard's not trying to run clock here at all. They're going no huddle. Yep, the go-go offense is working. Newton pulls it away. Throws it. There was a lot of pressure and just has to throw that football away. The Bears were all over him. Washington was in there. Washington had his arms around Newton, so Newton very smartly threw the football away. He's done a good job of that many a time here this afternoon. Yeah, they are saying that that is not going to be an intentional grounding, something that Morgan State thought it might be. He was hit when he was throwing that football. 
Howard playing without one of their top wideouts from Miami, Florida. Guy Lamagne uh, Jr. not playing. He was injured last week. He had a touchdown last week against Delaware State. Injured and not in action. And that is Johnson falling forward to midfield. Guy Lemonnier sounds like he should be the right, left wing of the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, put him out there, <laughs> see what he can do on the ice. Pretty talented well, player. Had a big game last week. Washington made the stop. Now fourth down coming up. Fourth and three for the Bison. They'll have to punt the football away. Today's game on STN is brought to you by Washington Area Broadcast Sponsors, Radio 1, the D.C. Lottery, Hook and Real Restaurant, Cochran Firm, Underwriting Support, Enable WJLA, ABC 7, and News Channel 8 to bring you this important regional game to you. Watch for highlights tonight on ABC 7. Touch Garns, and this is going to be a touchdown, Howard. Now their whistle blows. Garns was back to receive it. The ball is recovered by now, I think that ball was touched, but you cannot, when you return it, you can't advance it. So if they rule that it was touched by Morgan State, then it will be Howard football from where that ball was recovered. And it'll be first Garns had it. Put a hand on it right here. You can see it on the replay, Adam. Just kind of comes up. He tries to get away from it. Yeah, I think he was not going to touch it, and then he put his hand up at the last second. You cannot be indecisive in a spot like that, and it's a big turnover. And turnovers have hurt Morgan State this season. Gray was the one that recovered it. He would like to walk into the end zone, but as soon as he got possession, where it was muffed, and that's where Howard will have the football. So set up in great shape on the 17-yard line. A give to Wortham. Inside run. Wortham. Five-yard pickup. Yeah, he's a big back. We see a lot of speed profiled from this Howard team, but Wortham is a guy that brings a little bit more bulk as a ball carry. You see him. I mean, he's a, a downhill runner going right into the teeth of what is such a, a very sturdy defensive front of the Bears. 200-pound grad student, Wortham. Fake to him, going to the end zone to Anthony. And can't hold on to it. Back of the end zone, back corner to Anthony, who already has one touchdown catch. He could come down with his second of the day. Yeah, there's the old fade, and he, he put it in a pretty good spot. Anthony just could not get to it. Maybe a little bit too much on that throw there by Newton. Didn't miss my much, though. Anthony and Newton and Anthony have hooked up a couple of times, once for that 75-yard touchdown and a couple other big completions as well in this game. Third down coming up now for the Bison. Up 24-7, trying to add to their lead on homecoming. Trying to win back-to-back MEAC -back games for the first time since 2014. Newton going to run the football. Goes to the end zone right at the goal line and barrels his way into the lose the football. Waiting for a call what down by the one-yard line. And he is down. Newton is down. I'll tell you, he, was, he wanted six. He went hard after that goal line. And we see oh, Newton on your screen. The officials are talking about things that we have an injured player down on the field, a Morgan State Bear player injured. It was down just short of the goal line. Yeah, look at this run. It's very reminiscent of his touchdown from earlier in the game, but he lowered the shoulder and uh, really barreled over the defender. A lot of contact there, and I think it is number 25, D.J. Johnson, who took the brunt of that collision. Now the wave breaks out here at Green Stadium. Jam-packed stadium for homecoming weekend at Howard University. Their Bison with a 24-7 lead, looking to add more with 3.45 to go third quarter. Injured Morgan State player down at the two-yard line. Newton has been outstanding. It was another example there, Phil, of Newton being able to make something out of nothing, where on a third down play, he goes back, it's a pass play called, 
but he, he feels the open space to his right. He's able to leak out, turn up the field, and drive towards the goal line. And it's good to see right now uh, that up to his feet is DJ Johnson, and he's walking off. In fact, he's jogging off the field right now for Morgan State. That's a good side to see. DJ jogs off the field, and now his defense is left trying to keep the Bison out of the end zone as they have the football on the two-yard line and a very slow wave going around Green Stadium now. <laughs> I don't slowed, know if I've ever seen that before. Yeah, they slowed the wave down. So Newton with a rushing touchdown and two passing touchdowns for his Bison, who averaged 30 points a game. Newton straight ahead trying to sneak his way into the end zone. Waiting for the call from the official, and touchdown, Howard. Howard Bison with the short touchdown run down on the goal line. Boy, that turnover costly. Remember, Howard committed a turnover on a muffed punt earlier in the game, but they kept Morgan State out of the end zone. Now in this third quarter, it's the opposite. Howard is able to force the turnover. They are the fortunate benefactors of it and they're able to take advantage. Newton, that great run on third down, and it sets up the score. Newton with the short quarterback keeper, his second rushing touchdown of the game. So Newton's accounted for four touchdowns in this game. Yeah, it looks like they're going for two in a wild formation. Newton hands the football off, and an easy two-point conversion by Grant. Runs it in for two. Howard Bison, they're doing the wave, they're speeding up, they're slowing it down, but tons of points pouring in. The Bison lead it 32-7. Howard averaging 30 points a game coming in. They're at 32 here in the third quarter. Newton, true freshman quarterback, four touchdowns. Two rushing, two passing. Boy, he does it all, doesn't he? And we've seen his ability to step up in the pocket and look down the field and fire some long strikes. And his ability to make things happen on the run, as he's done time and time again, now twice in the red zone. White to return it for Morgan State. Has some running room and knocked out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Well, this is an important possession here for Morgan State. They, they probably should have been closer at halftime, but uh, we're not, unable to do that. And now here, trying to get some momentum going into the fourth quarter. Morgan State will be back home next week. We'll have it for you on the Sports Fever Television Network. Florida A&M comes to Baltimore, Maryland at Hughes Stadium. One o'clock kickoff next week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Staley. First and 10 from the 29. Quick completion. Out to Gentry as the grab. Eight yard pickup. That's quick hitter to Gentry. Yeah, that's been a very good play for Morgan State here in this second half. Run to the sticks, stop, and pop. And Staley's been able to hit a receiver right there three times in this third quarter. First down pickup, Staley to Gentry on that pass play. 3 11 remains third quarter. Staley going to keep it himself. That's how the game started on their first drive. Staley had a big run. That one gets up to the 48-yard line, close to another first down. Injured player down on the field, down at the 40-yard line for Morgan State. Yeah, it looks like an offensive lineman is down the, there on the right side of the line on that nice uh, run right up the middle by Staley. EJ's down, and the you know, offensive line... They were banged up. They were all together for the Towson game, and then since that Towson game, they were injured for a couple of weeks until last week when everyone, when the gang was back together. They like to call them the uh, trench mob. The trench mob was finally back together last week, and this is what they don't want to see is an injury to that offensive line that was finally getting healthy. Yeah, we saw it last week. Two different rushers get over 100 yards for a first time in this 2017 season. So this would be a big loss here for Morgan State. Today's telecast of this NCAA HBCU Division I college football game is possible because of the partnership between Sports Fever Television Network and Sinclair Broadcasting Group. Stations in Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Harrisburg, and Johnstown. 32-7. Howard homecoming and a big lead for the Big crowd here at Green Stadium enjoying what they're seeing on a very warm afternoon in Washington, D.C. Staley. 
give to Herb Walker Jr. who spins and gets close to a first down, but it'll be short. Third down coming up. Number three, Herb Walker Jr. to carry for the vice number 25, Leland Lasseter on the tackle. I think they're going to measure here. It's so close. And actually, it just did get a first down. They're going to move the chains. That was a nice second effort to be able to pick up that first down. Herb Walker Jr. gets the yards needed to move the sticks. And a first down for Morgan State. I mentioned about Morgan State next week hosting Florida A&M on the Sports Fever Television Network. And Howard goes to South Carolina State next week. Staley with the completion and another first down and a big catch at the 38-yard line. Catch made by David. I think when Morgan State looks back at the tape today, they're going to love how Staley threw the football against zone defense. This was another zone look, and he's able to really fit that football in. A really nice throw on that in route. Strong left-handed arm. Has some tattoos on that left arm as well. Does Staley wants the football. Another quick completion to David. Staley's pass complete. 27-yard line. David. David with the completion. So now Morgan State got things going a little bit offensively, getting some rhythm. 125 remaining here. I think Stanley's doing better of here later in the season is setting up his body to throw. There you saw he turned his shoulders quickly, very decisive, and he put that throw right on the money. There's no question, Adam, he is more comfortable with this offense than he was the first couple of weeks where Morgan State, first three weeks of this season, they did not score a point. Feeling a lot better about himself. Poteet with the quick, quick grab, gets the first down and more. Poteet. Moves the chains, gets up to the 24-yard line. Poteet, four catches today. That's another throw right on the money. Hit the back step and then fire. And it just feels like Staley is in a rhythm. He knows where he wants to go with the football. And there undoubtedly has gotten better in his pre-snap reads here as this season has progressed. First down for Morgan State. Give straight ahead. Three-yard pickup on that first down carry by Herb Walker Jr. The second down now, Morgan State. Seems like it's been forever since they scored. It was all the way back in the first quarter when they went seven plays, 78 yards, and Eric Correll went in from 15 yards to tie the game at 7-7. That was like a long time ago. But they've been able to move the football. They missed two field goals. They had uh, the late offensive pass interference at the end of the first half, which really turned momentum as well. That is the end of the third quarter. We're going to the fourth. Howard Bison. Want to get away with a homecoming win. They're in control right now. 32-7. Fourth quarter is coming up on the Sports Fever Television Network. D 2013, 28-14. That was the last win by Howard over Morgan in this Beltway rivalry. Second and eight as we start the fourth quarter for Staley and his Bears. Pressure comes. Staley still on his feet, fires it down the field towards the end zone, looking for Poteet and incomplete. How did Staley buy time? Boy, he just found a way to stay on his feet there. He was in trouble. And it was uh, actually an ill-advised pass. He just throw it up. Therefore, the taking in the middle of the field, really fortunate that it ends up an incomplete pass. It was almost a pass interference as well on Howard. But you see, he gets hit by two or three players uh, before he just gets rid of that football. But he was unable to get outside the pocket, so he had to kind of fire it near one of his receivers. Poteet was the targeted receiver. Here comes a third down for Staley. Staley going up top. Staley's pass is incomplete. And incomplete. Fourth down coming up. That's fourth down and eight here, Phil, but uh, more than likely Morgan State in this position down 32 to seven. They're probably gonna go for it here. Fourth down on the way. Morgan 0 for 1 on fourth downs in this game. On the season, 3 of 11 on fourth downs. Staley, 
fires, looking for Gentry over his head and incomplete. So Howard will have the ball over and down. Oh, he had a receiver on the other side of the field that was wide open there. But Staley went to the right side instead of the left. And the throw was a bit high, and it's going to be Howard football. As it was a great effort, but uh, that would have been a tough play to make there by Gentry as he was covered very closely. Howard with 354 yards of total offense. Morgan State with 359. Morgan State's run 61 plays. Howard has just run 49. Time of possession, Morgan State's had the ball for about 26 minutes compared to just 19 minutes for Howard. But Howard, that offense, like I said, they're not on the field a lot, but they score quickly. And that's been, their, that's been the case all season long with this go-go offense for the Bison. Ethan Johnson. Nice, and nice tackle made there by Jonathan Honeycutt there for Morgan State. Phil, I think you're right, though. I, I, when you look at how this game is played, you talk about the quick strike nature of the go-go offense. It's also the nature of how Morgan State plays defense. They've given up a lot of big plays this year. Wortham with the carry. That's the first down and a whole lot more. Dragging a Bear defender across midfield and in the Bear territory down to the 48-yard line. Wortham shows his power. Brad Student. Anthony Filial was injured with a shoulder injury, so we've seen a lot of Johnson and Wortham now taking over the running duties for the Bison. Johnson. Four-yard pickup. And early in this game, Howard was having a really tough time in running up the middle. Morgan State has such a powerful defensive front. But as the game continues, it seems like you can wear down a defense. And come the fourth quarter, those yards up the middle become a little bit easier. Barnon in the game now for Howard. He gets the carry. And he's run out of bounds by Washington. Number 20, Newton. Nine of 21, 230 yards and two touchdowns. For the Bears, number 10, Malachi Washington on attack. Running the football. 14 carries, 63 yards and two touchdowns. That's incredible. They have nine completions for that many yards. Again, it's those dynamic plays, those big, long, a couple of long touchdowns, a 58-yarder and a 75-yarder. Those were the touchdown passes that Newton threw today. Newton driven down to the turf and an incomplete pass. Great play by Julian Jenkins there to bust through on the defensive front and make the play, and it's now fourth down. But to your previous point, it, it, it's really that play early in the third quarter, that 75-yard pass it was a missed assignment as they were able to hit Kyle Anthony all alone, and he raced into the end zone untouched. That was kind of the backbreaker in this game. Carl Garns back to receive the punt for the Bears at the 10-yard line. Howard will punt the ball back to Morgan State. In control here, 32-7, and homecoming in the fourth quarter. Garns will let it bounce. Takes a bounce at the 10 and rolls into the end zone. We'll step aside. The Bison, 32, the Bears, 7. Sports Fever Television Network. Back at Green Stadium. The Bison with a 32-7 lead. Staley. The completion to Baldwin. The catch and a first down, 15-yard pickup. Baldwin makes the grab at the 35-yard line. Staley, so penalty marker down. Yeah, it was thrown right near where that ball was caught. Baldwin it really went up and high-pointed that football. Well, outstanding catch. Penalty marker on Howard. Staley today, 20 of 34, 247. No picks, no touchdowns. Last week he had three touchdowns. They went over Savannah State and they scored 48 points, the most points they have scored since 2014. And an offensive explosion. Eric Correll. Gets a yard. And this is interesting because they only have seven points today and they're losing in a lopsided fashion, but there's a lot of positives to take from Morgan State about the way they've moved the football in this game. Absolutely. They're a lot more comfortable, and you can tell the way Staley is playing a lot more comfortable with the offense. 
So for Fred T. Ferrier, things are a lot better off than they were in the first three, four games of the season. They were shut out of the first three games in a row. Staley with the completion to Trigg. 12-yard pickup and a first down close to midfield at the 49-yard line. Trigg with the catch. And Stanley's had great zip on the football all day, hasn't he? That was another pass. You can see a great spiral, and he put it right on the numbers. In case you're wondering at home, how big is Staley? He's six foot seven, 245 pounds. Eric Carell running, has the first down, running room. A lot of running room, real estate in front of him, making guys miss down inside the 10-yard line and is knocked out of bounds at the five. Eric Carell with a 45-yard run. Well, all day it's been Howard busting the big play, but Morgan State hits it big with a run right up the middle. Outstanding play by Harrell, who's had a big day. As we'll see, he gets the give, and Harrell, he was extremely decisive, hitting the hole right up the middle and breaking it deep, taking it towards the sideline. And, uh, boy, you could have seen a late hit right there as well, but they didn't get the flag. Eric Harrell closing in on his second 100-yard rushing game in a row. Had 100 yards last week. Is the only touchdown for Morgan State. And there's a timeout by the Bears with 11.04 to go fourth quarter. Morgan State threatening. Eric Correll, the only touchdown for the Bears, a 15-yard touchdown run. Next week, Morgan State will host Florida A&M. One o'clock kickoff on the Sports Fever Television Network. MEAC football next Saturday from Baltimore. And don't you think that uh, this fourth quarter is very important towards the confidence of the Morgan State team going into that home game next week against the talented Florida A&M squad? As if they're able to put together a few good drives, get a few scores, they're going to know that uh, they could have had a better output in this game, and they're going to be confident going into next week's contest. The rest, of the rest of the way for Morgan State next week at home against Florida A&M. Then two road trips at Bethune-Cookman and then at Delaware State. And they finish the season at home in Baltimore against Norfolk State. That's the remaining schedule for Morgan State in the MEAC. And for the Bison, that's South Carolina State at Florida A&M, Norfolk State. And they finish at Hampton. Eric Correll. Inside run, gets two yards. Harrell got him there, so they want to try to give Harrell a chance to get into the end zone. That's right, but this is his territory right here. Harrell's a very powerful back. He's got a great combination of speed and power, and therefore you want to give it to him and let him try to really guide that ball into the end zone. Harrell had the game winner last week, or last year against Howard in the final 30 seconds. Harrell short run, short of the goal line. Well, closing in on his third 100-yard rushing game of his college career. Just shy of 100 yards rushing today. Third and goal. They've still got some work here to go. It looks like the ball is right around the three-yard line. Long three yards. Herb Walker Jr. now in the game. Fade route, Staley throws it, intercepted, end zone. Howard coming up with the interception, the 10th interception of the season by Elijah Staley. He's thrown a couple in the end zone this year. That's something Fred T. Ferry does not want to see his quarterback throwing interceptions in the red zone. Well, that's a fade pattern, so it's kind of a trust pattern. You kind of lay it out there and hope your receiver makes a play, but he didn't lay it far enough out. It's too far to the inside. You want that to be closer towards the sideline, and therefore it became a play in which uh, Howard's cornerback was able to be right there to make. So Howard keeps Morgan State off the board with the interception by Cook, the freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio with the interception in the corner of the end zone. And for Morgan State, five times now, they have been in the red zone and they've scored one touchdown. It tells you a lot, and all that, you had you know, 10 penalties for about 140 yards. It's another factor why there's not a lot of success for Morgan State. Looks like we've got a new quarterback in the game here for Howard. Yeah, not a surprise. Newton's day is done, and Kalen Johnson, a senior, 6'2", 205 pounds. And not a play that he wants to remember here, dropping the snap on a handoff on his first play. 
Johnson was the quarterback last year when Howard lost to Morgan in Baltimore. And then the give to Wortham. Straight ahead, a couple of yards there for Howard. So Newton's day is done. It was a great homecoming day for the true freshman. Four touchdowns accounted for, two rushing, two passing. Newton was everything as advertised. What a way to start your college career. You start against the FBS team, you go to UNLV, you're 43, 44 point underdogs. You go in there and you win <laughs> the biggest upset in college football history to start the season. Now oh, Howard's working on their fourth win of the season. Johnson goes deep, no one was there. Incomplete pass. Fourth down coming up now for Howard. Left to punt the ball back to Morgan State. Yeah, the receiver there, number eight in Antoine Moray, he ran a deep out, but Johnson threw it right down the hash mark, deep down the field. So they were just weren't on the same page there. Carl Garns to receive the punt for the Bears. He's at the Bison 46 yard line. Kowalski's punt. Garns has to go back and field it and falls down at the 40 yard line. Morgan State territory and that's where the Bears will have it with 8.37 remaining, down 32-7. We'll step aside, the Bison in control on homecoming. Coming. Howard rolling 32-7. Staley passing the far sidelines and incomplete. Staley goes up top. Incompletion intended target was David. Him and David a special connection the last couple of weeks. Really, David and Baldwin, also Jones. Last couple of weeks, he's been on the same page with them. Herb Walker Jr. spinning in the backfield. Now has some running room and closes in very close to a first down. Eight-yard pickup by Herb Walker Jr. Well, he's a playmaker, isn't he? That's a play where they wanted to run that ball left, and there was nothing there. And Walker's able to just stutter step, spin, and he's off the races to his right. And all of a sudden, an eight-yard gain on uh, what really didn't have much there. Third and two after that eight-yard run by Herb Walker Jr. Give it back to Walker. Gets the first down into Bison territory to the 46-yard line. Nice run there to move the chains and a first down for Morgan State. There's an injured player down for Howard at the 49-yard line after that Herb Walker first down run. Yeah, it looks like Richard Johnson, the defensive end, or Richard Sr. is down. Have to hope when it comes to this time, with it being so warm, on this hot field that this is that time of the game where cramps can be an issue. That's something you got to hope for in a scenario like this. Howard and Morgan State University extend a thank you to their Sinclair Broadcasting Group partners in Washington, D.C., WJLA, ABC7, and News Channel 8 in Baltimore, WNUV, the CW, for their support in bringing this game to you. Washington, D.C. viewers, be sure to tune in to ABC7 tonight for all the game highlights between Howard and Morgan State. Tending to the injured player on the 49-yard line. A lot of things for Coach London. You know, Coach London won a national championship at Richmond. That's where he went to school. And then he went to University of Virginia. And then he was coaching at the University of Maryland and then takes this Howard job. And you know, immediately a lot of, of course, Howard has a lot of great alumni. And they... Right away, when Coach London was named the head coach, they're like, okay, they're serious about football. They want to get this program in the right direction, and Mike London's the guy to, to try to get that done. 
Yeah, and Coach London said even around campus, there's a new vibe, a new energy around the excitement for this football team. And there should be, as uh, Howard is putting together an outstanding year. And with a win today, once again, they would eclipse their win total from the last two years combined. The coach has got things moving in the right direction. It helped when Newton decided to come to Howard as well, the true freshman. Staley throw the football on first down and he is sacked. Third time he's been sacked today, brought down at midfield. Staley is sacked. The Howard defense by number 94, Isaiah Flood. Gotten to Staley three times today. Isaiah Flood this time making the sack as he gets there. Actually checked that it was Aaron Motley to bring down the quarterback Staley. That was a four-man rush, so Motley able to beat his man outright and make the play. Motley's made some big plays. He's been very active defensively. The Howard Bison. They have to be happy with their defense. Holding Morgan. Just one touchdown. Staley. Ball's tipped in the air and intercepted. The interception made by Cook. His second interception of the game. And another turnover by Morgan State. So many of Staley's pass, that's now 11 interceptions, by the way, have been like that. Tipped up, deflection interceptions. He throws it so hard, yeah. and the ball was deflected up in the air, and Cook comes up with his second interception of the game. Yeah, in some ways, a tough break there for Morgan State, but a great deflection there by a linebacker. And uh, right there to pick up the loose change was Brian Cook, and it's his second interception here of, uh, I believe, the last two drives here from Morgan State. They had the one in the interception to keep Morgan out of the end zone. That one on the deflection. So Newton's watching. Kalen Johnson, the quarterback, in now for his second series as QB. And the give to Johnson. Dances forward for about a yard. For the Bears, a lot of excitement in Washington, D.C. now about how it's football. Game you can tell by this homecoming crowd. I mean, From the I think they stopped selling tickets because there was people, <laughs> and there's still people outside of the gate watching this one from the streets that couldn't get a ticket into Green Stadium for this homecoming affair. It is a standing room only gathering, no doubt about that. Howard will snap, uh, snap the three-game win streak in this Beltway rivalry by Morgan. They won three in a row. Wortham trying to string the play out. He's run out of bounds well, at the 45 yard line. Little, little talking going on on the sidelines. The, the coach is pointing, I think, maybe to the scoreboard as Washington was jabbing in the sidelines after running Wortham out of bounds. Yeah, I think that coach there for Howard was just... Uh, he was almost boxing out. I know we're getting close to college well, basketball season, trying to keep his player away from the Morgan State player there as they were jawing at each other after that carry as uh, Malachi Washington of Morgan State still playing with a lot of heart of passion here late in this fourth quarter. A lot of national attention now for Howard because of Kalen Newton. But he's proving attention worthy the way he's playing, not just the fact that he's Cam Newton's little brother. Give to Johnson, right side, short game by Devon Johnson. Fourth down coming up for Howard. And it's a new look offense, uh, but when you've got a first year offense and you tie it with a freshman quarterback and you have this kind of success, it, it, it's got to get your fan base really riled up for what the next few years could be. Brennan Marion, the offensive coordinator, he was a outstanding football, basketball on track athlete at Greensburg Salem High School in Greensburg PA went on to have a tremendous career at Tulsa and played a little bit in the NFL with the Dolphins and had a great story went out to California was basically kind of living in gyms and living in football offices as he played two years at two different junior colleges in California until he got got on at Tulsa and then he's bounced around and turned a couple of high school programs around coaching and Knows Coach London from his son and got the opportunity to bring his go-go offense to Howard. And it has fit beautifully, hasn't it? As Howard takes a delay of game. Uh, here they did so on purpose to try to give their punters some more room to place this one down near the goal line. Carl Garns to receive the punt for Morgan State. 
standing at the 17-yard line. Oboski punting. He's been busy today. Garns tries to field that, then loses the football. Why didn't he just let it go? That's the second time that's happened to Morgan State. Boy, a second time Garns has misplayed one one time. He let one bounce, and then instead of letting it roll by, he stuck up his hand and it hit him. At that time, he tries to make a diving catch. And there's really no benefit to trying to make a diving catch. Of course, in collegiate rules, if you're down, you're down. So if he catches that ball cleanly, he's going to be down right where he lands. He can't get up and run. And if you let that bounce and go, you're really not hurt by it at all. So that was a pretty silly decision. Happened once and it happens again. The coaching staff's like shaking their head. How can that happen? We can't let the same mistake that happened earlier take place again. Well, it's a good point because so much of coaching is making sure that mistakes are going to happen, uh, but making sure that they don't happen over and over again. But there, that's the second time this half that Garns has made a very poor decision on a punt. Getting to know Coach Fred T. Ferrier the last couple of years, I know that is just going to really get under his skin. Quarterback keeper by Kalen Johnson. Well, let's be honest. Morgan State was down 10 points at halftime, but there's a good chance they could have been leading in the first half the way they were playing. They couldn't finish their drives, and uh, Howard was able to hit a few big plays. But the second half has been a very sloppy half here for Morgan State. They're going to be frustrated about this effort. You're right, Adam. In the first half, they had more total offense than Howard did. Right. But Howard had more points. They weren't getting the weren't scoring in those red zone opportunities. We'll give to Wortham. Straight ahead, not much there. Third down after Wortham's carry. 340 remain in this game. Howard with their fourth win of the season. Four and three. Snap the Morgan Strait, Morgan State win streak in this Beltway rivalry. And also, more importantly, for the first time since 2014, win back-to-back -back in the Act Games. Well, that's a big deal to get on a roll. You already mentioned Howard's stretch here in their last four games of the regular season. They're going to play a lot of teams right near the top of the MIAC. It's going to be uh, a, a kind of a tough road to hoe. We'll have to see how they're able to get through it. Uh, but it's going to be a great challenge for this Bison program. Johnson, the quarterback, keeps it himself. There's a penalty marker down the 35-yard line. North Carolina A&T, they're the class of the MIAC this year. They're 7-0. North Carolina Central is 3-0 in conference play, 5-1 overall. Hampton is also 3-0. So you have three teams, North Carolina A&T, NC Central, and Hampton, all undefeated in MEAC play. So a lot to be figured out in the next couple of weeks That's right. in the MEAC. It's going to be an exciting race down to the finish line here in 2017, undoubtedly. Penalty decline and a fourth down coming up now for the Howard Bison. And yeah, they're going to go for it here on fourth down and nine. Morgan State takes a timeout. With 2.50 remaining, and we'll step aside as well. The Bison enjoying homecoming. Big lead, 32-7. Fourth and nine coming up for Howard with 2.49 remaining. Johnson with a pass on the sideline and incomplete. Johnson's Morgan State will take over on downs. Boy, that was the really an outstanding over. catch there by Antoine Murray. Yeah, as he made a leaping effort right there at the sideline, he was just unable to bring it in. We already talked about Newton, but coming into this game, Newton, impressive as a freshman, leads the MEAC in total offense, second in scoring, Adam, in second in rushing, second in passing average, and fourth in passing efficiency. What else can you ask about a true freshman? He's certainly done it all. Yeah, this offense is averaging more than 450 yards per game. And, and you know when you play Howard, you got to put up points. That, that's why. They've been so prolific. It's really been remarkable what he's been able to accomplish in his freshman season. And even in last week's game, Howard and Delaware State, that was a game that saw more than 1,000 total yards. Be anxious to see how Morgan State bounces back next week at home against Florida A&M. Ball batted up in the air again. It's a pinball right now and eventually falls to the <laughs> turf. Or that could have been another interception. That ball hung in the air for a good seven seconds. They might have buttered that ball up before putting it in play. Nobody could get their hands on it. I don't know if I've ever seen a pass 
that was touched by more players. There's one, two, three, four, five. It might have been tipped five or six times. <laughs> Much like a pinball, ball stayed in the air and everyone got involved. It was like a volley. Yeah, the football might be dizzy. Second down. 238 remain in this game. Everyone that came back on campus at Howard, happy to see their bison playing so well. Eric Correll Jr., football's on the turf, picked up by Howard. It's going to be a bison touchdown on the return. Aaron Walker, scoop, score on Harrell's fumble. Opportunistic the bison to be in, in this second half, and there's another play in which Morgan State puts the ball on the carpet and uh, Howard's able to pounce on it late in this play and, and really a great job to scoop and score there by the freshman and he's a local product here from D.C. Aaron Walker scoring a touchdown on homecoming. A lot of turnovers by Morgan State. They had 19 of them coming into this game and turn, turnovers continue. We do have an injured player and offensive lineman Cooper Clark it is down. Number 75 here for Morgan State. So Clark and down. They had another offensive lineman down earlier. They had one back in the first half as well. So when we talk about that offensive line getting healthy, three guys banged up here today on that offensive line yeah, for Morgan State. And I have to hope that those players are going to be able to continue and be okay as it's nice to see that uh, Clark is on his feet and walking off the field here. But for Morgan State, you, you, you've got to... Hope that they are able to uh, kind of recover, but look at that. He got rolled up on on that play. Kind of a leg whip of sorts. And with that, that that's a painful play late in this game. Busky on for the extra point for Howard. With 2.28 remaining in this game. Kick is up and good. So the defense gets, gets involved and scores for Howard on the Fumble recovery, the scoop and score. The Bison now 39-7 lead over Morgan State, their Beltway rival. And I think that's now five turnovers for Morgan State in the second half alone. They've had the two interceptions, one of them in the end zone, the two muffed punts, and there that fumble, which turns into a defensive score. And one previous to that, before those fourth quarter miscues. And when we looked at uh, Morgan State and their 20-point win last week against Savannah State, what stood out was not just the fact that they scored 48 points after they had uh, struggled to score in their first five games of the year, all losses, but the fact that they did not turn the football over. So uh, in the first half, the turnovers really didn't hurt them all that much. They just could not finish drives, but it's been a sloppy second half for the Bears. And uh, they're going to have to uh, try to hit the reset button going into next week's matchup with Florida A&M. Turnovers, penalties really hurt Morgan State. You can't take anything away from the way Howard is playing right now. Everything firing off cylinders. And I think what Coach London is going to be most happy about is the way his defense played today because last week against Delaware State, Delaware State had over 500 yards of total offense and it was only a 17-10 game at half and then 35 unanswered points by this explosive offense. But I think one thing that Coach London, he's a defensive-minded coach, wants to make sure that his defense starts getting better and they got better today. Yeah, they have. They, they've made the big plays. And we've talked a lot about that on offense but on defense as well. The return by White. Big return, big hit on the sideline as well, on the far sideline on the Morgan State side of the field. And the return by White. Lebowski, Lebowski, he got hit earlier when he was punting, <laughs> and here the kicker pays back with the shoulder hit. You think he was waiting to uh, deliver <laughs> that one after he it got smoked on the punt attempt in the third quarter? Yeah. Lebowski lowers the shoulder and makes sure she gets out of bounds. So the excitement will continue to grow with Newton at quarterback and Coach London as the coach here at Howard. And I think more of the alumni across not only this country but all over the world that went to Howard and are doing things are going to start to notice this football program. And that's exactly you know, the kind of culture that Coach London wants. Yeah, they always have a lot of play people come back for homecoming, but just hey, look at the crowd that we had, especially midway through this game here today. I know many have hit the exits with the heat 
that we have. And there's not much shade here at Green Stadium, but but still, this is a great gathering. They weren't kidding when they said every seat was going to be taken, and they were going to have people standing outside watching from outside of the gates. It was packed. The hill on the side was packed. This place was buzzing today for homecoming. Herb Walker Jr. with the run right up the middle as the first down and more. It's up to the 36-yard line for Herb Walker Jr. and a first down for Morgan State. Now 140 remaining in the game. So we'll see Morgan State next week in Baltimore back home. They had their first win of the season last week against Savannah State. One o'clock kickoff to next week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Staley, time to throw. Has the completion. Another Bears first down. And the catch was made by White. So for Howard, it'll be four and three. Next week, they'll be at South Carolina State and then at Florida A&M. They do not return back home until November 11th, their last home game of the season against Norfolk State, and then they finish the year at Hampton. That's a tough two-game road trip right there. Herb Walker Jr., patience, but no hole opens up. Great job by the Howard defensive front. Much approved Howard defense from a team that I watched a couple of games on film this week. The defense has improved from the three games I watched from earlier this season. There's a timeout on the field. Morgan State calls timeout with just 59 seconds remaining in this one. 39-7, Howard, impressive. Newton. Stepped up to be the top wide receiver weapon for Morgan State. Had a huge week last week. Another big game today for Baylor. 53 seconds left on the clock. It'd be nice to see Morgan State punch this in here to finish on a pleasant note. It, what has been a very tough half of football for him here. Herb Walker Jr. bounces to the outside. Has some real estate, cuts back in inside the five yard line, down close to the goal line, and just short of the end zone for Herb Walker Jr. 45 seconds remain. Outstanding job by our Sports Fever Television Network crew. Came to Washington, D.C. in late October. We weren't expecting 78, 79 degree temperatures. They were sweating it out with this homecoming crowd here at Green Stadium. Yeah, didn't have to bring the old cardigan sweater today, that's for sure. Danielle Podlowski down on the sidelines, working injured with that sore voice. She toughed it out for us. We there's appreciate no, her. There's no DL for broadcasters. Given the touchdown from Morgan State, Herb Walker Jr. finishes off the drive with a two-yard touchdown. Herb Walker Jr. had that outstanding sophomore year where he put up incredible numbers, set the single season record in rushing in Morgan State history. Then junior year, couldn't play because of academic problems. And then came out the next year, got injured in the first game. Right. So he's been itching to play, and that was his second touchdown of the season. The point after is up and good by Rhea. Well, great to see Morgan State. They got into that red zone quite a few times today, and many a time it did not end up in points. So. Good to see the Bears are able to finish it off with a score here with 41 seconds remaining. 39-14. Next week, 
will be back in Baltimore for Florida A&M and Morgan State. Last year, this game was a thriller. It was a night game at Hughes Stadium. First night game in a long time. First time that Morgan and Howard played on campus because they were playing at different sites. Right. Uh, last time they've been here at Green Stadium was the last time that Howard won in this series, and that was back in 2013. And then they played at some various sites. They played in Chicago and in New York. And so last year was back on campus. And it was Coach Fred T. Ferrier's first win as, at that point, the interim head coach. And Eric Harrell scored a touchdown late in that game. They came back and won it with a late touchdown in the final 30 seconds on the Sports Fever Television Network a year ago. And these teams aren't even an hour drive from each other, but here they were playing in Chicago and at places all over the country, kind of in a, a unique setting in that regard. So it's nice to have this rivalry and matchup uh, back uh, in front of uh, the home fans of Howard and then, of course, Morgan State back in Baltimore, uh, we assume, next season. I think a lot of people that are watching today are going to keep their eye on the Howard Bison to follow the career of Kalen Newton. His father, Cecil, pretty much handpicked this school for his son to go to. Right. He's about 5'10". He wasn't recruited by any of the FBS schools. His brother Cam is 6'5", so Kalen a lot smaller than, than Cam. And things have really worked out for the Newton family. It was a smart decision by Cecil Newton. Kalen felt like he was an only child because Cam is 10 years older. So Kalen is 18 years old. Cam's 28. And their older, oldest brother, Cecil Jr., he's like 32. So you know, he kind of felt like he was you know, growing up. Right, when, when Cam was winning the apart. Heisman and winning the national yeah. title at Auburn, Kalem was uh, literally, you know, he was trying to tie his shoes. I mean, he, he was basically just starting elementary school around that age. Maybe he was six or seven years old, so probably a little older than that. But, but still, uh, he was really, really young, the baby of the family. And uh, well, what does it kind of feel like for uh, Cecil and Cam to see their youngest brother now uh, having this kind of season here in, in the college ranks? Victory formation for the Howard Bison on homecoming. We get a 39-14 win over the Morgan State Bears. Moved to four and three on the season. And three and one in MIAC play. So they're still in the mix. As I mentioned before, you have three other teams that don't have a loss in the MIAC. North Carolina A&T, North Carolina Central, and Hampton are all undefeated in MIAC play. Homecoming successful for the Howard Bison. They win it 39-14. For my partner, Adam Pohl, and the entire Sports Fever Television Network crew, I'm Phil Shaner. We'll see you next week. Baltimore, Maryland for our MIAC game starting at 1 o'clock. Florida A&M and Morgan State next week. Have a good day, everybody.